How do you learn who you really are? It's not found in books. It's found on the battlefield. What's up, Warriors? All right, this is Rick, Battlefield of the Mind. I'm here with Janista Z, which uh, we're going to talk about emotional intelligence. And one thing I like about you is you uh, you use the word conquer, which I see you as you got your warrior sleeves ready today. Feeling poofy and powerful. <laughs> All right. So they're like, all right, Rick, I've listened to enough of your stuff and I love what you do, but who the heck is Janice? Well, she's about to tell you. So get ready. Janice, who are you? What do you do? And what are we doing today? Oh my gosh. Okay. So can I start off by saying thank you so much for having me here? I'm so excited about having this conversation because of our, our stories. You're a warrior. I'm a conqueror. You know, this is going to be an awesome dialogue. So I'm really looking forward to this. But yeah, my name is Janice and I am, there's a lot to me. I, I do a lot. My ADD is kind of like got me into a lot of different spaces, but I'm a third year medical student and I have learned over time through my studies and my life experience and other people's life, ex life experiences, how emotions play such a major part in the things that we accomplish, um, the things that we say, don't say, um, get into, don't get into as far as maybe lifestyles, careers and whatnot. And so with all of this, I have produced or I am curating what I call emotional conquerors. And that is someone who is able to assess, strategize and execute an elevated emotional state in order to achieve elevated results in life. And like I said, through my own personal experience and just watching the lives of others and how emotions have played such a major part in just their abilities to be able to overcome things or how some people are succumb by their emotions. Um, it's given me so much clarity on how I can help people in that space to be able to have that emotional intelligence and to be able to pursue their dreams without holding back. Okay. Now we're already about to go in hard and I like that. So there's a lot of things that are said here that I don't think people understand. And I often say the answers are not the solutions. You're like, I'm going to help people em elevate their state. Well, that may be the answer, but what are you talking about? How do I elevate my state? This is my, like, we, I'm in Illinois. Do I elevate Illinois? Like, what are we doing here? Like, what, I want to elevate my state. Help me out. What does it mean to give, give us, like, this is what I'm talking about? Yes. Well, as an emotional conqueror, the things that I talk about specifically in, like, my talks and my coaching, um, it's being able to be in your emotional state, acknowledge where you are emotionally. If it's an emotional charged event, being able to dominate the emotional scale, being able to read where you are emotionally and say, okay, I'm choosing to elevate emotionally to maybe joy or enthusiasm um, or optimism instead of fear or blame or guilt, or doubt or worry. Um, being able to understand the power and the freedom that you have within to be able to choose that emotional state. Um, and then also being able to hold that state to where you can encourage others to be able to rise to where you are, at least rise to a better state for themselves. So being influenced to other people emotionally as well. I like it. All right. I feel like you and I get to do some fun stuff. People like to hear warriors and conquerors and how we go into battle. And I want to do battle tactics today. So, like, first, I would like you to give your opinion on what emotions are, but then let's pick some of these that people have to battle. Doubt, you talked about worry, fear. I fight these all the time, and I've got my style. But I want to know your style. How do we fight these? So, first, first question before we start killing some stuff together for people. All right, emotions. We live and die by these emotions, but people don't understand the rules or the laws to the emotions, the energy that we have, the way our spirit or our heart operates. And we're controlled by these things first. Please help me understand what I'm trying to work with here. And then we'll use the tools that you've got to kill some stuff. Yeah. Well, from my studies, I'm learning that with certain situations, they bring certain thoughts. And then the way we feel about them, based on like our experience, our, maybe our education um, and other things as well, um, give us this state where, again, in, it's kind of a new language. It's kind of a new study. So it's like, okay, I feel a certain way in my body. Maybe I'm tense. Maybe I'm relaxed. Maybe I, I smile. Maybe um, I, I, I feel uh, maybe heat all over my body. 
you know, so those types of things are kind of based on the situation that you're in and the thoughts that you produce. And they, they typically produce an emotion. So, um, being able to put those things into words, it takes time and it takes, um, practice, but that's generally where it starts. It starts from a situation and a thought, and then you have an emotion based on the thought and the situation. All right. Now I'm going to go a little different. I've, I've always, I've also often seen that, the feelings come first and then the thoughts come after. So you may have a feeling and then rationalize it out. Uh, are you saying you feel like the, the thoughts, they come first and then we have feelings after? Yes. Okay. So like uh, if something happened, like I would think about what happened before I had the emotion. So like, let's say like, oh, no, I just dropped my coffee. I would go like, it looks as though the coffee has spilled on the ground. Now assessing how much coffee is on the ground, I can see that it is about 12 ounces of coffee. What emotions shall I choose? <laughs> yeah. Or I go, no, ah, and then I have to rationalize my 12 ounces. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in that situation, you see the coffee dropping and in your thought is like, oh, damn it, I dropped my coffee, you know, and then the emotion comes after that. And it's like, wow, like, you know, what am I going to do? And again, that might be your stance, but somebody else might be like, you know what? I'm just having a day. You know, this is, this always happens to me. You know, I shouldn't have gone to this particular Starbucks or Dunkin or whatever, you know? And so again, it depends on your experience and just your outlook of things. So not everybody's going to have the same emotion with the same situation. So that's why I, I perceive that the thoughts come before uh, the emotion because they're not it, automatic. Interesting. I like it. So, all right. Because I listen, I prefer that. That sounds a lot easier because my strength side is going to be on tactics and action. Mm -hmm. So that's my strength. When it comes to heart and spirit, I'm still growing in these areas. It's not my strong side. So if you're like, well, the thoughts are first and then the emotions come. Now, would you then hypothesize that people, if they don't have control of their emotions, are because they don't have control of their thoughts? In some ways, yes. In some ways, yes. You know, because, again, if you come into a situation where uh, for me, if I come into a situation where I have worked through my emotions and I have kind of made it to where, no, I'm going to have a fantastic day. I don't care what happens. That coffee drops. I'm like, OK, whatever. Uh, can I get somebody to help me clean this up? And I'm on to the next thing. I'm not stuck there. And I don't get angry in that moment because I know psh, this is not a big deal. But somebody else, maybe they've had a snowball of other emotions that have piled on before that event happened. And they explode because they haven't been able to manage their emotions. They haven't been able to tackle things. And they, they kind of vibrate, I'll say, um, kind of in the lower emotional state just on a regular basis. So my dominant state is joy and enthusiasm and optimism. So when I see certain things happen, um, I've already trained myself to say, okay, whatever, you know, we're going to deal with this. And I'm still content. And I, I don't go into a, a, a lower emotional state. All right. There's a couple things there. First off, you say my dominant side and the way that I handle it, which I like that, by the way. But I'm just, all right. So how, what are we, what are we doing with this? How do I make joy a dominant side here when, like you just mentioned, I just spilled coffee and you got a cool dress on right now. Let's see. Psh, it just goes all over. Are we going to do a Mentos commercial and just pour coffee all over and change <laughs> it to a brown dress today? Like, 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 how are we going to be able to change these states simply because I want joy to be my dominant side. But man, sometimes we're having days that uh, we used to call it in when I worked door to door on, on sales jobs, we'd call it losing your attitude. Mm -hmm. We're like that one thing went wrong. And then you got just knocked in it, like, screw this. This day sucks. And we're like, did you have a bad day or did you have a bad couple minutes? And then you milked it the rest of the day. Like, so how do I make it so that joy is my dominant side? I want joy to be dominant. Yeah. And you know what? I think for me, because I've worked with, you know, I've, I've mentioned that I've practiced, but being able to acknowledge those lower emotions that you feel no matter where you are. And this is what I enjoy about coaching. No matter where you are, you can come in and I can train you to be able to flip your thinking. So it's, it's a practice. It's a process. But once you are able to work through those feelings on a regular, like a lot of people consistently deal with fear and, and grief and despair and unworthiness and things of that nature. Once we're able to spill, I'm using spill, but once we're able to get all of that out in the open and process that, once we're able to 
put it in its proper place. Well, you're not worthless. You're not, you know, you're not unworthy. You're not, these are the things that you're feel for, fearful about, but why are you fearful about them? And once we're able to kind of unpack all of that, it gives you the freedom and I, I've used, uh, I've heard Abraham Hicks use the term like a cork. It's like once you get rid of that weight, you can kind of bob towards the top of the water once you let let go of all of that. And then you're able to better better handle emotional, emotionally charged states and things like that. And you're kind of like, well, okay, well, this too shall pass. Or if you're in that moment, like even for me, like if I get upset about something again, I'm not milking that moment. Yeah, I might be pissed off in the moment, but it's like, okay. What can I do to fix this? How can I get, you know, my, my day back on point? You know, I'm not going to let this destroy the rest of my day. And that's the conquering when I'm, I'm able to execute. I say, OK, this is the situation I've strategized and I'm going to execute now. Now, this is a tricky game because I call this the race to acceptance by going through your grieving cycles on all things. But I do want to hear how you do this. How do you conquer this? Because it's really easy for someone who doesn't understand your system to use denial as acceptance. Oh, well, Janice says, I'm good. So like, whatever, I'm good, is what it is. That just happened, whatever. And then denial becomes the way that they get to acceptance by not really going through what happened and just going like, whatever. And then like pretending everything's okay, which is, you know, a suppression system. You know, it doesn't assess being angry, doesn't assess sadness, doesn't assess bargaining. And even if it does go into bargaining, you can just go, is what it is. How do you help people actually work through the system of the emotions to be able to be like, I'm actually good. Like I've come to acceptance or meaning or honor or peace in this one. Like instead of just going like, well, is what it is. So I just won't think about it anymore. Like it's real easy to mix it up. How do you go through the like the right way to do it? Yeah, I, I think initially when someone is in has a lot of bottled up anger and a lot of bottled up, it's it's just going to be about unpacking all of that first. It's not going to be about, OK, well, here's you know, you can't go from crappy to happy. So here's the, the path that you're going to take to the joy. This is the path that you're going to take. And so it's about unpacking and acknowledging those states. You know, a lot of times when people are like what you say in like bargaining and just kind of brushing things off, it's like. OK, I'm not dealing with the with the situation. I'm just putting a Band-Aid over it. But I don't want people to put the Band-Aid. I want them to take the Band-Aid off and heal that thing, heal that wound. And then we're going to go back because now you're on you're on a better path instead of just letting the, the gaping wound just sit open with a bandage over it. We're taking that off and we're going in and we're we're cleansing it with, again, information. We're unpacking it. Where did this come from? You know, this is this isn't your fault. Typically, there, there are a lot of, uh, of emotions that we carry from our parents, from people around us. You know, they say you're the most like the five people that you spend the most time with. So a lot of times we're carrying on other people's emotions on things. So once you're able to unpack that and realize, like, I don't have to carry that, you know, that doesn't have to be my state. And I can find a way again, ha having a person feel empowered and reassured at the same time for me is the, the, the key to a lot of what I see. And I, I feel like it's wrong with the way people process emotions. It's like, Oh, well, you know, you're going to have bad days. Okay. But do we want that to be the case? Do we want that to be the lifestyle? Do we want that to be the norm? No, we don't. So I'm going to give you reassurance. I'm going to tell you it's okay to have that crappy five minutes, but at the same time, I'm going to tell you there are tools that you can use again, one step is unpacking and then being able to realize what 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 is at the top of the scale again that joy that enthusiasm being able to realize okay at that state you are so much more likely to handle the next situation better maybe you drop that cup of coffee because you were so focused on a thousand things maybe you drop that coffee because you were angry about something else and it just built up so there's times that we can prevent certain things from happening just by being in a better state. I see it. So it's like, uh, just so I can try to understand um, terminology and make sure I'm on the right path here. When you're talking about like the emotional curses or being able to the perspectives that we're seeing things with, you know, you know, I dropped my coffee and going like, maybe it's because I was in a certain state or maybe my emotions were in a certain place, or maybe I was just in the high gravity zone and there's so much gravity in that area. And it just, Pulled it right down. Like, I don't know what happened. But in any case, these emotional things that we have to unpack, are we getting into belief systems or is this just not being control of our emotions? 
Um, I say it's a little bit of both. I mean, once we work, and I think that's the actual work is getting to the the depths of our beliefs and being able to to understand where they come from and the validity of them or the the lack thereof. Because some beliefs that we have, they're not valid, you know. So being able to understand that um, starts you on that path. Now this gets tricky because the one thing that I've noticed, and this is why I want to get into a little bit of system work. Uh, and notice that the answers are not the solutions. They're not. We could tell them step by step and they're still going to need your help right. because the answer isn't the solution. Knowing what the answer is like, uh, I don't Have you seen my Rubik's cube stuff? Have you seen how that works? No, no. All right. This is the answer. All of your sides are solved. That's the answer. This is what you want your life to look like. You want your finances. You want love. You want happiness. You want joy. You want all, all the sides. And you're like, oh, yeah, I like that. You're like, I've been working real hard. I got, I got a good job. My money is good. But the rest of it is all jacked up. The rest of this is all mess over here. So I'm like, but I want to be able to get all my sides balanced out. And you're like, okay, well, I'll teach you how to do that. What you're going to have to do is you turn the money over this way so you can focus on love. And you're like, wait, 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 Janice. I worked really hard to make it so my money side is good. Are you telling me I have to focus on something else? And I have to turn this to start getting to the other sides. I don't want to do that. I don't believe that's the way. I don't feel good about this. So people are going to live their lives all disorganized because they don't want to mess up their good side. Their belief systems are not going to allow them to grow anymore. How do we get people out of their way when the emotional part is all, everything's messed up. Love is messed up. Health is messed up. You know, happiness is messed up. All the other parts are just not done, but I got some monies, but why am I not happy? Like my answers are not the solution. I got Well, you got to solve it this way. And you're like, I know what it's supposed to be, Janice. I know all the sides are supposed to look that way. Mine's not doing it. What tools can we give them to say, like, I'm going to try and give you some steps. And if you try to do them, you're going to need to call me anyway. So let's give them some tools here for this emotional part. I want to hear how you conquer. Let's give them some tools and let's conquer some stuff. Because I know the Rubik's Cube is supposed to be all the colors are the same. I know that, but mine isn't doing it. Yeah, I think for a person like that, let's let's dig into the money side, the side that's all the same color. Let's dig into that and see how you were able to get to that space where the money's good. OK, so, so it's probably because, well, I mean, you, you're you're that way because you've put a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of strategy into that. Let's smear that on some other areas. You know, the the saying that, you know, one thing that you do, you probably do everything else in the same light. So it's like, let's see if we can bring that same grit, that same tenacity into your other spaces. Like, and then asking them, hey, how did you strategize? How did you get to that place? How do you feel about these this this state that you're in, you know, career wise or money wise? You know, does it give you comfort? Does it give you contentment? Are you content with life? Are you joyful about that? You know, and just being able to say, OK, well, we can bring some of these aspects that have made you shine there over here, too, and build you up from there. All right. So we got a lot of awareness questions. Now, I think if you've done this as long as I've done it, people do not have this skill. We have to train it first thing. People don't know their own things. And oftentimes, even if they're asking the right questions, they're not answering the questions. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I don't even know what to ask. I don't know what I want. I don't know why I do what I do. I've never challenged a belief system before in order to know whether it's authentic or inauthentic. And even if I did find it, I wouldn't know how to measure it. So now I'm at a crossroads. Let's look at what my things are. And I'm like, I see what you're saying, but I don't know what to do. So I have to answer the questions or, and then how do I know what questions? And I'm just getting overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> my emotional state is getting lower. My yeah. frequencies or something is different. <laughs> yeah. And that's because of the confusion. You know, there's a confusion that's there. And I acknowledge that. You know, for me, starting off with the awareness is key. It's really important. So being able to have that and finding some way to motivate the, the individual to say, OK, you know, OK, I've gotten here. This is something 
maybe it's different, maybe it's new, maybe I haven't had this time to really process like, hey, you know, yeah, I'm just confused. And that's okay. It's okay to be confused. So being able to say, okay, well, let's find two or three things that um, you are your philosophies that have helped you get to that state. Maybe you got up early in the morning. Oh, okay. You know, let's, let's build on that. Okay, so in the mornings, what what have you been doing? You know, what are your routines in the morning? You know, who are you listening to? Maybe a podcast or your friends, things of that nature. So once we start getting into those little nitty gritties for, again, the structure that's there, for the company that the person is keeping, the thoughts that this person is keeping on a regular basis, let's see what you're thinking. And and they say, what, 90% of your thoughts are the same thoughts that you thought yesterday. Let's change that up a little bit. Let's see what's, let's put these things out on the table. And again, this is the assessing part. And then to strategize to be able to go in and say, okay, instead of doing this, try this instead. You know, instead of, you know, the doubt, just understand that, okay, when we are unpacking and unraveling all this stuff, you know, there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. So we're going to strategize, sit down and make some action plans, again, based on this person's personal philosophy and the company that they're keeping, the people that they're watching, maybe on TV or, you know, how much time are you watching, you know, certain programs or whatever. So being able to take that and assess. And then it's like, then we can start chipping away at some of the things we can start making changes. Okay. Instead of this, or instead of spending this much time watching TV or instead of spending this much time with this particular friend that you always feel drained after you get off the phone with them, let's, let's, let's back up off of that a little bit, or that coworker that you talk to on a regular basis that again, you just feel like every time you talk to them, it's just like, Oh, it's just draining. Oh my God. So it's like, again, that corkscrew, you know, you have so many things that are pressing you down in the water, but once we start lifting those things off, you'll feel a little bit lighter. And that's when you can go back in and start asking those questions again and helping that person again to to reassess. We're at another state now. We're at a better, maybe you're not joyful yet, but at the same time, you're more hopeful that there is something that can, can be uh, discovered throughout the process. And so again, once we start executing, then we go back to the beginning, you know, maybe there's another issue that comes up as we're unraveling everything. And then we strategize with that. Hey, okay. Is this something that's positive or negative? How do you feel again? The emotions. Okay. Do you feel doubt and worry? Do you feel fear about this? Okay. Why do you feel fear about this? Okay. Because you feel that fear, we're going to acknowledge that. Let's, 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 again, we're, we're drawing it, we're drawing it out a little bit. Is there doubt? Is there worry? Is there blame? Is there somebody that you're blaming for the way that the, the system is? You know, a lot of people blame politics for their state when they have more power than, you know, uh, uh, the, the government will lead on, you know, and so. For me, just being able to draw those things out, ask those questions, and again, acknowledge each state that they go to emotionally until they get to a lighter state, until they get to a higher frequency. All right. I, I, I hear where you're going with this. I agree with like the, the mindset tactics. I see you're going – your mind side. I see your mindset side is strong. And so you're talking about emotions, but you're using like it seems like logical tactics. And I've – often seen that people have uh there's a dissonance there there's going to be like where like i know the answer but i feel like this like you, you know like you said it in, in multiple whether it be political or even food related it doesn't matter i know sugar's bad for you but i like how i feel when i eat it like those this is a a dissonance that we have fighting our mind and our hearts and so the emotional state part of it versus the logical tactics seems like there's often a head versus heart fight often now I mentioned you don't mentioned lean on your strengths. What is what are the things that you're already good at? And let's start with that foundation, which tactical, not emotional, mm-hmm. and then being able to go let's challenge it by asking questions to understand again, logical, not emotional. Mm-hmm. And so I want to know how do I tie the emotional part in because. I'm with you. I'm mind side warrior. I'm like, what's this tactics? What's the strategy? What's the game plan? Let's challenge the questions and find the answers. Let's find the problem. But I don't know how to address the emotional part of it. Mm-hmm. So maybe I, I'd lean on you a little more to go like, well, help me with my emotional intelligence on this one, because right now it feels very like tactical action based. Again, you're speaking my language. This is how you, this is, that's how warriors come in, but we're not addressing a feeling. We're still addressing a tactic. I need more. How do I address my feelings? Yeah, I I think what I mentioned when it, it comes to 
the tactics and emotions being alongside one another. You can't have one without the other in the work that I do. So it is a feeling. How do you feel about certain things? You know, does this um, roadblock that you have come from fear? Does it come from doubt? Does it come from worry? So again, as we are unpacking things and we're, we're, we're cleaning up things, we're, we're talking about your emotions along the way. So again, once we lighten you up with the tactics, your emotions will, will automatically start to feel more, you'll feel more relieved emotionally. It won't feel that, that high blood pressure or high heart rate or that tense feeling or that, that sweaty palm feeling. You won't be feeling that as much as we begin to start doing the, the work to actually get you to a better emotional state. All right. You, you mentioned the same battles. Let's do some fights, I'll, even hypotheticals or whatever. All right. Someone's like, you mentioned doubt, worry, fear. Which one? Which one's like your favorite one to fight? Hmm. There's a lot, I would say. Well, I know for me, despair. Despair. Okay. Now, despair. Most people are not. Gonna, we're going to have different definitions. Mm -hmm. So, for you, what is despair? And then, how do I fight this thing? Yeah. So for me, despair is like a sense of hopelessness. And if I may tell a short story about my own experience, um, my mother passed away when I was 19 and they found her in her apartment. She had been in there for a while, uh, died of a brain aneurysm. And so for me, that sent me down this spiral of just hopelessness and feeling like nothing will ever be the same. Nothing will ever be right with my life again. Um, I went from family member's house to family member's house to at one point I lived in my car for a couple of weeks because it was just like so much on me. And the thought of going to school and everything like that was like the furthest thing from my mind. I just wanted to make it another day. And so for me, that sense of despair when I was in that car, I couldn't even sleep because it was such a scary feeling. I was in fear, but again, despair was there. I was feeling hopeless that I wasn't going to make it. And so being able to, again, have a little bit of hope in the back of my mind. Okay. My mom taught me a lot. She taught me how to survive. She taught me how to thrive. She showed me with her example that every day is a new day. Every day is a new opportunity. And so with that, slowly but surely, I was able to, one, start making the phone calls that I needed to get back into school, start reaching out to individuals that would help me to align, realign with my purpose and with my mission. And so I've run into people who have felt this sense of like, nothing's ever going to go right with me. And usually a lot of times, and it, it varies for me, it varies from person to person because I, I listen to what it is that they're saying to me and I say, okay, you know. Um, maybe you have felt that despair for whatever year, two years, maybe you feel that your life, your very life might be in danger. I had a conversation with a woman last year and she was just in a state where I, I again, it's despair. So I'm getting out of my car and I'm like, just trying to go to the library. I spent a lot of time in the library, but I heard somebody yell out. You deserve to die. You deserve to die. And I was like, wow, what, what kind of thing is that to say to somebody? So I'm like, I, I, I did, the way it, it, it came out, I thought the person was talking to me. So I'm looking around like I'm, I'm, you know, getting my own emotions and whatnot. I'm like, who said that to me? You know what I mean? So I look around, I didn't see anybody, but I sat down in my car and I said, you know, whoever said that, even if they were talking to me, they need a lot of love right now. And so I like literally I'm like feeling myself with with the sense of empathy, the sense of just wanting to to help whoever this person is. If I can, I didn't see them, but I'm like, if I run into them along the way, once I go into the library, I'm going to help them. So sure enough, I get out of my car. I'm, I'm full of love. I'm full of of just wanting to be a servant to someone. And so. She comes, I, I walk up to her and she's like, you know, I'm so sorry. I just had a really rough day and I, I, I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't know why I'm saying this. And so I, I just sat down and I was like, you know, life is such a beautiful thing. And not everybody's ready for that conversation in that state, right? But for me, I was so full of love and full of compassion for this person. I don't think 
that it wasn't taken as me being arrogant towards her um, because I was going through my own situation at the time. So I was coming from a place of I'm telling myself this, everything's going to be fine. Life is such a beautiful thing. Life is a gift. You are going to be fine. So what is it that, that you're experiencing? And so she told me about um, some situations that was going on with someone she was living with and some domestic violence. And I sat down and all I asked her was to have more faith. At the end of the day, I can't get you again from crappy to happy, but I can ask you to, to have more faith. And I gave her a time frame. Hey, within the next six months, I want you to keep working on your faith. And I want you to be a person of great faith, belief in yourself, belief in what you can do, belief that you can come out of this. And so just speaking to someone in a faithful tone and no matter what your religious background is, we all have a sense of faith, a sense of something that we do believe in. And so reconnecting that person back to the source, whether it's themselves, the universe, source energy, God, whatever it is, being able to connect them back to the divine and the divine that's within them is one of my key tactics to, I'm using that word tactics, but it's one of my key elements that I use to be able to help someone in despair. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Warrior, thank you so much for being a part of the information that we have. And you're part of our story as we are a part of yours. It's very much an honor to be able to connect with each other. If you want to know more or you want to get started with working with me or working with our warriors so that you can begin your path to authenticity, strength, leadership, and accountability, this is the way. Together, we are way stronger. Now you get to choose. Do you go forward or keep doing what you've always done? If you stay where you're at, hey, click on some of the stuff and follow what it is. We got motivational stuff. We've got podcasts. We've got more things. Just subscribe and do the stuff and we'll keep you updated. But if you want to start going in, start jumping into what our programs offer and start your journey and being the hero in your own story. I like it. All right. So you used a, a spirit side approach as that person. And, and I'm, if I'm reading you right right now, you probably have a high intuition. Like you probably can like read people pretty well. Mostly if I tell me if I get this in, in the right realm, you've probably been through some shit and this made it so you have to read people very quickly for a safety purpose. Fair or not fair? Yes, that's fair. And so this unlocks that high awareness of people's energies, micro expressions. You're able to kind of catch if somebody's vibe is off real quick. You're like, oh, I see what's up here. Like you probably catch on very quickly. Fair or not fair? Fair. That's fair. Okay. So this person, you can see their despair in this case, which, you know, often falls into the apathy slash de depression when you start seeing her defense mechanisms coming out, which is attack in that state, whatever she was in, she went into, I'm just going to project my damage onto other people, which is not new. Hurt people, hurt people has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you noticed you're hurting people, not because I should be taking it personal, but because that's how much you're hurting. You're pouring that on other people. I see you. And what you need is a spirit side like approach. Instead of, uh, well, let's get into what the problem is and approach it with a system, you said you need more spirit. Now, is this your intuition talking? And this is why you said person by person. Because do you go with everybody and go, you need faith? Or is it go like, I can see where you're at and you need more structure. You need more discipline. You need more tools. You need more faith. Or is it, is it like always faith? Oh, it's very individualized. And yeah, it's very fair of you to say that my intuition, because of my experience, is very, I'm very in tune with it. I'm very in tune. And I've had to um, learn. And I'm, it's been a pleasure at this state knowing how powerful my intuition and my ability is. It's been a pleasure to be able to take that journey with individuals on that individual basis. Yeah. So this is where I'm, I'm also noticing too, that people who have been through some of the toughest stuff, it unlocks part of your toughness inside of you. And it can get a little bit tricky for people to read it too, because it comes off as sometimes misread because it'll come off as a little more aggressive than we mean it to, even if it's good intentioned. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so I, I'm sure you've had that too. We're like, you're coming off a little strong on me. And you're like, no, 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 we got to conquer this thing. I'm with you, not against you, <laughs> but we have to challenge. So it's tough when people have been through tough stuff to be read with the genuine authenticity that we are bringing because we just don't want to see people in more despair. Despair is a tough one though. That's a, a depression curse. It's a curse that sadness just compounded. Not to mention you start putting all the other parts. Now, I know this is in our grief cycle and I'd like to, I'd like to keep going on how to battle some of these. You took that person was a faith. They need hope. They need purpose. They need belief and belief systems. I'm with you core. You know, even when I work on map work and I start helping people find where they are, belief is the answer, but we have to find where you're stuck. And oftentimes despair is in our grief cycle. So I know you're grieving. I know you're in, in, in pain right now. I know that things are tough. Well, how do we help them find their confidence in this area? You got to just believe, got to just believe. It's tough too, because if they're in there, denial's playing around. You can't fake it till you make it all the time. Sometimes you really got to make it. <laughs> well, that's an interesting statement um, that fake it till you make it. My belief is um, we say fake it till you make it all wrong and we, we per perceive it all wrong. To me, the fake is the depression. The fake is the anxiety. It's all of the negative things because I believe that we are here as vessels of joy and love and empowerment and freedom. So I believe that's who we really are, but it's just that society gives us this idea that, oh, okay, well, you know, if you're confident, you're, you're faking it, you know, but I, I like what you said about having purpose, giving someone purpose. I think giving someone that goal, like a mission statement is helpful in that sense of, and it, it has to be individualized, but giving them that purpose, it gives them some direction to go to. And again, it, it kind of takes the focus off of the problems. I have a mission. I have a goal. You know, I have a prize to be won, even if it's just my sense of contentment, being okay. That's a goal. That's a purpose for me. And so I think a lot of, um, again, what we talk about is having that. And for me, just having that intuition and having that, that, that drive, it, it can come off a little bit strong at times. And I've known, I have noticed that where I'm in a meeting or something like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rah, rah, rah. You know, this, everybody was else like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, they, uh, you know, can you hurry up and wrap that up, please? You know, so, um, but again, and I, I just love what it is that I do. And I know that the right spaces will align for me and the right people will align for me, too. So I don't get, you know, beside myself or I, I don't doubt myself when I'm in those situations. But I just I, I realize like somebody needs this power. So I'm going to keep it. But, you know, in this space, I understand it's too much. <laughs> oh, no, I have no judgment on that. I love it. So when it you just said a couple of things there and um one was motivation, one was confidence. So let's go ahead and tackle confidence first. You just said that people who come off as confidence, it's judged as fake. Like, that's an interesting thing. Is this, And you said societally, like, this is a thing. I, I'm curious to hear your point of view or opinion on that. Like, you know, people say you seem really confident and confidence is fake. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, that that whole fake it till you make it statement. I, I, I have, through my reading and um abraham hicks uh, was the one that brought brought that statement to me and i was just like yeah fake it till you make it well if we we say that the confidence is fake the empowerment is is fake the freedom is fake but that's what we're truly here for like no that's that's who we really are the the confidence isn't fake once you tap into that it's like no that's who you truly are it may feel off but that's who you truly are I think I, I want to make sure I don't have Abraham Hicks mixed up because I've listened to so many people. Was she the one who's really big on vortexes? Was that her? Yeah. Okay, I remember. I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure she's the vortex one. And also, Abraham Hicks is a woman, and so like people would have it mixed up because Abraham. Right, 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 right. Hey, sometimes it'll mix you up. I'm like Abraham, that's a woman. Yeah, I was like, that's a woman. So yeah, I remember she would talk about vortexes and. That was when I was real early on in my career listening to her stuff. I was like, I don't know what she's talking about, this vortexes. Mm -hmm. That had me confused, which now I understand a little better because especially emotional pull and those kind of things becomes a little more understandable. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand when she was talking about vortexes. That's just me. Yeah. I, was I couldn't that way connect. Too. I was that way, too. And so I, like, I got my own personalized understanding of it now, too. It's like, okay. <laughs> and even with meditation in 
arriving to the vortex you know so uh yeah it took some time <laughs> yeah I, I, I couldn't connect with vortexes for a while there so <laughs> all right yeah abraham hicks you mentioned her a couple of times i was like i was making sure i have the right person in my head yeah. so yeah good stuff all right so confidence is who we really are and people say fake it till you make it fake it till you make it i i, I want to go in with you on a few things here because i want to fight some doubt i want to fight some fear i want to get into some of these too but i also noticed you mentioned a lot of society stuff and I want like your real opinions on stuff. There's some stuff out here today that's some bullshit and maybe some stuff that might be good, but it's hard to tell the difference. What are some of the ones that if you could crush some of the nonsense out here, what are some things that you would like, if I could just delete this for people so they can have a damn chance, what are some societal stuff that you would just start? We got to get that out of here. What would you get rid of? You know what? The first thing that's come to my mind is and I see it more so in the African American community, but this bashing of men and women. Um, one thing in particular, because I, I see a lot more women doing it than I see I've seen men. Um, one thing that I've come to recently and an appreciation for guys and what all you have to go through as protectors and providers for the family. And, you know, you guys are these warriors. You know, I have a new appreciation for the masculine. And so I think um based on what my new understanding is on you all's role as, as, as men, husbands and all of that, I have learned to appreciate what you guys' role is, is as opposed to this whole idea of toxic masculinity. I think that's what I'm getting at. But um, I, I, that's one idea I really want to crush this whole toxic masculinity. All right. Help me understand. I've, we've beaten this on, on the face quite a few times with different psychologists and different people. All right. Let's assume I know nothing. I'm taking a Socrates approach. I know nothing about this, Janice. What is toxic masculinity? What does it even mean? So I can understand. Yeah, my perception of what I've gotten from uh, my seeing videos and stuff like that is that this idea that men being more masculine, being strong, being leaders, being aggressors or aggressive in, in their own natural way. Um, it's toxic to society. It's the breakdown of society. And you see a lot of like, maybe like magazine covers or just different videos where men are, are being made to be more weak or more feminized um, in order to fit in with the culture that society is trying to create. And so I feel that um, and what I've seen in my experience is that this whole idea of toxic masculinity is something that is um, detrimental to everyone. And, and, you know, you should run from a toxic masculine man. But I, I've seen like masculinity in, in women, too, where it's taken too far. Um, so I think in general, it's just masculinity taken too far. If a woman takes it too far with her toxic masculinity, is it still toxic masculinity? I or is it just strong women? It's toxic masculinity. I think it's throwing the balance off of like humanity, really, to be honest. I have a theory for that, just to put it out there. If you think about how people bully, men and women bully very differently, you know, so they'll, they'll do it differently. Guys are a lot more physical with their bullying, you know, mm. stuff, stuff a dude in a locker, beat somebody up. You know, they're going to be physical. They're going to be pushing somebody. Boys are more physical when it comes to bullying. But women and girls do this reputation demolition thing. And they tear somebody apart. They'll create fake profiles just to destroy them. They'll kick them out of groups. They'll ostracize them. They'll gossip behind their back. Women do a reputation demolition to destroy somebody's character or at least the perception of their characters to others so that person's no longer a threat. So before I go into the next part, have you seen that too? Agree or disagree? I don't want to go like, we're like that's not what they do. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. I've seen it like in the movies and in my own experience with uh, school. You mm -hmm. know? So, yeah, yeah, I've seen that more so. So here we are. We can at least agree this is the, the style. Well, how do you beat somebody who's bigger, stronger and has natural leadership if you want power? How do you beat them? Well, you can't fight them straight up because they're bigger, stronger and have more power. You can't fight them like that. But I can shame them into submission by saying being bigger, stronger, and having more power makes you bad. And so then they have to go, well, shit, if I'm bad for being strong, I don't want to be judged and shamed 
for being strong, perhaps I should censor myself, make myself weaker, and defeat me for you, so now you can be strong. Yeah, I don't I don't like that approach at all. I mean, <laughs> I think there's better ways of doing that. Um, and one statement that came to mind that I, I've, I've used in the past few years, if you can't beat them, join them, and then beat them. You know, if you want to be that, that if you're that person who is smaller and quote unquote weaker, um, going into their world and kind of getting involved with what with the, with they're doing and with their group and finding a way to kind of maneuver in their space and then beating them at their own kind of game. I mean, physically, you probably couldn't do it, but you could do it mentally. I think for the most for the most part, a lot of those smaller guys, they have other aspects, other strengths that they can play to. Again, playing on your strengths, you know, um, sure. you get in that space. You're not really taught to do that. You're not really, you know, that's that's not really uh, an environment that is groomed. You know, it's just kind of like, OK, tell the teacher, get him out of here. Leave me alone. Or, I, you know, I get pummeled or whatever I get embarrassed or whatever but being able to fine tune different strengths and being able to make it to where it's like oh okay you know i i see where you're coming from but i i got i got something for that you know again give i see oh, yeah. being, hey being able to have a mental fight sure i'm with you on that one well i think it's really easy to beat a weak person who's trying to use blame shame and judgment it's actually pretty easy you just don't you don't accept their bullshit yeah, well, that's it. Like, that's what, in order for a strong person to lose to a weak person, they have to make themselves lose. Mm. But if they just go like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Well, now I got nothing. Right, right, right. <laughs> that, that didn't that work. I've seen like, that in action, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. If you were like, Rick, you're bad for being strong. I'm like, all right. I'm still doing it. I don't care what you think. Like, I'm not changing anything because you have an issue with not being strong. Go work out then. I don't know. What do you got for mm -hmm. If we were racing and I'm faster, instead of going, let me train to get faster, you go, I have to take you out of the race so I can win. You're not worthy of winning. You shouldn't be leading. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not the leader if you have to just make everyone else not play so you can be the leader. Right. right. That's not leadership. And so I'm with that. Let's go into leadership. I feel like is this toxic masculinity. What about these dudes who are hyper aggressive, over the top, badasses, or even like you said, like like black community, straight gangster, bad motherfucker. Don't mess with me. Help me out. Is this toxic masculinity or is this healthy masculinity? Uh, well, it's toxic, but I wouldn't con I wouldn't just consider it masculine because it's like, OK, I see a lot of women doing that, too. And I, I alluded to, you know, that being toxic masculinity, too, in women. But it's not just a man thing is my point. It's like, you know, you see a lot of, of women in these same rap songs trying to outdo the guys and everything like that. So it's a cultural Fair thing. It's Fair not enough. necessarily a gender. I like it. Now, this is where we're agreeing. I'm agreeing with you very much now mm -hmm. is. I don't think this, <clears throat> the ideas of toxic masculinity and toxic femininity is kind of muddying the water. And I think almost all polarization kind of goofs up the conversation anyways. Mm -hmm. Is there merit for benefit to it? There can be. And I've talked to people who are polarization coaches and they're in the masculine and feminine energy. Is there merit? If done correctly, sure. But very rarely do I see polarization used correctly. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing where you said toxic masculinity or toxic femininity when is it just toxic behavior? Like it doesn't have to be masculine or feminine. Just go like uh, being a dick sucks no matter who you are. Right. <laughs> no matter what gender. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter what you are. Like if you're being a jerk and like, so I would lean it towards this. What I've got a theory. I'll give you mine after yours. If you have one, or I'll just give you mine if you want. What should we be measuring to go like, Hey, that's toxic or not toxic. Where's at least a place to start for people. What's your opinion? Hmm. I want to hear your theory first. All right. So as much as much as I'm not trying to go too biblical, you remember, you remember when Jesus was challenged? I don't know if you've, if you've heard the story, Jesus was challenged by the Pharisees or by some was a dude who's like, okay, Jesus, what's the most important commandment? Which one's the most important? Cause he's going to outsmart Jesus. Right. And so, and so he was challenging Jesus to see, like, oh, I'm going to trap you here and make you say what's the most important so I can beat you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus made a simple answer. He said that all the commandments are important, but let's go ahead and simplify it to two. OK, let's keep it real simple. First one, love God with your whole mind, body, heart, soul, in which case I don't care if you like you said, 
energy manifestation universe. You, listen, put yourself into something more than you first. He said, well, first, love God first with everything you got. Second, love thy neighbor as you love yourself and you'll be doing better than most. Mm-hmm. Let's just start with the golden rule. If you're doing something that you would not like done to you, you're the problem. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take all that person's stuff. Do you like your stuff taken? <laughs> Hell no, I don't like my stuff taken. Don't take people's stuff. <laughs> right. I'm a bust their ass. Do you like your ass busted? <laughs> I do not like that. Then don't bust their ass. <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. You know, let's just start at the very simplest. I'm going to cancel them. They don't deserve to have a platform. Would you like to be canceled? Well, no. Mm-hmm. Then don't cancel people. Maybe have discord and a better conversation. And if you're canceling people, it's because you don't know how to have a conversation. Again, you're trying to use blame, shame, and judgment to have people censored so the weak can now be in charge. Have you ever had a leader who was a name tag leader in any job? They were not a good leader, and they abuse this power recklessly and treat people terribly because they are not a strong leader. Have you ever seen this before? So you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Having a name tag does not mean that you are qualified to lead people. So here we are in a world where people want to be name tag leaders because I can't really compete with you. So I need to have you take yourself out of the game so I can be in charge. Mm -hmm. This is the game right now. So it's interesting to say, I'm going to destroy your reputation. I'm going to shame you for being good. So that way you make yourself no longer in the race. And then I want to be the one calling the shots. But people who do this abuse this power. Mm. Weak people are not compassionate and kind and understanding. In fact, I very rarely see a weak leader be a good leader. Mm. Mm. Usually it's self-serving or now I'm in charge and you're all going to do what I say. Really? Mm. Yeah. So this is an interesting thing. It's funny. You're toxic. You're bad. You're not good for what? Being too strong. (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, wait a second. I, yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, uh, for me, that and going back to what you were saying earlier, just as far as like if somebody's to approach you and, you know, try to shame you, it's just like, man, whatever, you know, get on, get on with your, your day. You know, I, I'm, I'm not messing with you. Just leave me alone. Um, I think once we can get as a society to that point where things that don't really pertain to you, you're able to let it go. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's uh, a measure where we can kind of say, whoa, OK, he he just let it roll off of his back. It's not a, a big deal, you know, because it really isn't. You know, the things that we see on social media and all of the the um, back and forth that we see from time to time, it's just like. You, did you really have to come in here and say, well, I'm unfollowing you because you're 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 stupid. You're an idiot. You know, like, did you really have to say that? Couldn't you have just unfollow? Like, there's a, a button and you can just push it and, and go on about your way. A lot of people do communicate so poorly. Like there's a I have I don't know if you've seen our TikTok. We we got we got quite a few followers on there. We got a few comments in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think right now we're pushing like 290,000 followers. So it, it's, it's, it's growing pretty quickly. There's a lot of comments in there. And I don't play in the comment sec. I don't really, like, I'll, I'll, I only, we only feed the happy ones. We don't feed the, the shitty ones. Mm. Because uh, I know that they're trying to get attention. And that's, it's a negative way to approach it. But I watch how people talk. And I, I watch people start off with like, this person doesn't understand this. There was no question. It's just a created assumption that they started off with. That's like me saying, like, like if you're like, here's how you fight doubt and here's how you beat doubt. And I'm like, Janice doesn't understand how to fight fear. (laughs) You're like, well, she didn't talk about fear. She talked. Why did you just make up that she doesn't understand something when she was talking about a different topic? This is the way that sometimes people will speak. And you go like, I can see you're just not very good at communicating. If we start off with a made up assumption and then go into a judgment to make it so you can say a point that is completely your opinion. What an interesting way to speak. Mm-hmm. Well, you're dumb because you don't know something I'm making up right now. <laughs> right. It's like, what? That's how you talk. Right. No wonder your relationships are failing. Uh-oh. 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 Uh, we'll go there. We'll go. Uh-oh. We'll go back in a little bit because I'll smash on people with this stuff. <laughs> Anyways, so we're getting into like, all right, I'm with you. The, the, the 
bashing on people. And I can say bash in both ways. But I think if we start off with the golden rule and go like, wait a second, what you're doing right now, do you like when people do that to you? I think it would really it fuck people up pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Like how many you said women a, a lot of times do blame and bashing on men, right? Mm-hmm. Well, do they they like being blamed and bashed on? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely well, then not. don't perfect. don't do that. <laughs> you don't like that done to you. Yeah. Don't do that. And this gets into the point too, where the people that would create consequence are being shamed for creating consequences for people who do poor or toxic behavior. Mm-hmm. There's nobody to really go like, hey, we have to check each other on that shit. If the people who would be the ability to go like, hey, chill it out, you know, like the the dad at home going, hey. Stop. You know, like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, dad's involved now. Like, yeah. like we chill out a little differently than mom because I've been stronger than my mom since I was 13. Mm. Can't fuck with dad, though. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's a different game. Mm. Now, it's also tricky, too, because how many people are growing up without dads in the home and encouraged not to have dads in the home? So now there are no consequences. Mm-hmm. Just just more emotional behavior. So now we have people with less emotional intelligence with compute complete. And this is one of my favorite abilities. The brain can do justification. Mm -hmm. It's okay that I do it because I can do the most dark, evil, twisted shit to people, Mm -hmm. but it's their fault because I didn't want to do that. They made me do it. I didn't, I wouldn't do that if they didn't do that. I'm the good one. Where did that come from? Where did it's it like, yep, yeah, but you did like a three month plan to completely annihilate this person's life. Well, I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm not the bad one. They're the one who took the coffee thing at the at the water area at work. And I said, don't touch the coffee thing. But they did anyway. So now I had to destroy their life. Mm-hmm. You're like, I don't think I don't think that that's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I think you're the bad one here. Well, I don't think you should be judging people. <laughs> well, one thing I want I want to uh, I'm sorry I'm I'm jumping you all jumping let's do it with this story um the word emotional and you use that word emotional to describe like where people are going what emotions what emotions are they experiencing more so what which ones I want you to I actually them. I actually love when people use emotions with thoughts like well my emotion is that they should do what I say I'm like uh, that's not an emotion yeah, <laughs> My emotion is they're a jerk. That's a judgment. That's not an emotion. No, the emotions you see people on this and many many guys, they're uh, they're being, let's say, vengeful, angry, Mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. You know, they they may feel in some form powerless and that powerless brings them more anger, Mm -hmm. you know, because you get into the basic, you know, parts for what get people triggered. Mm -hmm. Usually something is taken or something is lost. You have injustice or unfairness or an unmet need. And so when we have those pieces there, you're going to see somebody start getting real shitty, justifiably, though, yeah. justifiably. Right. I can break the golden rule now because I'm real I'm angry. angry. I'm angry. I'm in and my angry. anger means I make up the rules for justice because I hate injustice. And these new rules for justice apply to me and everyone else is bad. Hmm. Well, now for you, if that's how you feel, scream it out. Let's let's hear it. Let's 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 pull that out some more. What else oh, do you I- feel angry about? Yeah, I'm angry that and then you start or you start getting into where people start getting into like, I'm real angry because my dad's a dick. Okay. And you're like, oh, now we're finding my dad used to hit me all the time. Uh, My dad, my dad was mean. Was that your fault? He sure said it was. Okay. What did you do? I didn't do what he said. What did he say? He said to do what he says. And you didn't? No. So you had that one coming, huh? Yeah, I deserved it. You had it coming, but that's okay. Cause now you're learning, you've gotten that experience with your dad and you're going to take that out in the life and you're going to kill it because you learned that, but you don't have to be angry anymore. You don't have to sit in that anymore. You can be free of that. He yeah, but, your, but it was my did. fault. It was my fault then. So should I feel bad for that then? Should I feel bad that I, it was my fault and like, I'm not good. You are. What, what makes you think that you're not good because your dad had that, yeah. that moment. Well, he told me that I didn't listen to him. And because I didn't listen to him, he had to hit me. So it was my fault that I deserved that because I wasn't good. So I must not be good. Well, how about this? What if your dad was doing the best that he could with the information that he had? 
What if he was doing the best that he could to protect and provide and he didn't do it in the way that you might have thought was ideal or someone else thought was ideal, but he mm -hmm. was doing the best that he could. Was he there for you? Did he support you? Yeah, he was he was there. And, you know, that's fine. If, yeah, if he did the best he could, I can accept that. But it still doesn't make me any better. I'm yeah. still bad for who I am because I don't do things right. And you let me know all the time. Yeah, according to him and according to his viewpoint. But that doesn't <laughs> mean that you did not do them right. You have well, to be able to look in to yourself and say, hey, I did the best of what I could back then. And I maybe was a little rambunctious. Maybe I was a little wild. Maybe I was all over the place. But what lessons have you taken from that? Yeah, I guess the lessons I've got so far is that, like, I kind of deserved what I got. Um, you know, I'm not... I'm not that good. Uh, I, I need to keep trying to be better because I'm not good enough. And, you know, if I don't do it right, I guess I deserve for people to hurt me. So what are you doing right? You can't there's there's have to be something that you're doing right currently. Talk to me about work or friendships or maybe there's some know. some hobby that you have that you're doing consistently. I don't know. I do stuff that I like, but I don't know if I do it right. And it seems like also whenever I do the stuff that I like, the people that I'm with, like my partner or people I'm with, just tell me that I'm like taking too much time doing that stuff. So I must be doing that wrong, too. So you and your partner, how much time do you spend together? Do you live together? Mm -hmm. I try to spend as much time with them as I can, but, you know, they work a lot, too. And then I work. And if I'm doing my own thing and they just don't like what I'm doing, it, they just tell me I'm doing too much of it and I should just stop. And then they'll get like mean and they'll tell me like, you know, I'm just messing it up. Tell me a time when there was maybe a teacher or a friend who told you something positive about what you do and who you are. I don't know. I think a lot of times I end up like kind of staying off the radar because I don't want to get noticed with that stuff. Because anytime I get noticed, it's usually not good. Can you think of a time where you've had someone interact with you and tell you that you've done this particular thing in an amazing way and in a, in a unique way. Uh, anytime that I would win or I would do well, there was always some sort of criticism like, yeah, but you could have done better. Yeah, but you could have done better. Was that from your dad? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Anybody else give you any critiques or mention anything to you after those events? Uh, I mean, maybe a coach or somebody would be like, Hey, good job on that one. But that was about as far as it would ever go. It'd be kind of like a, like one fist bump and you're like, oh, all right. Like, and then I'd be back into the, the shadows again. So nobody noticed me. So did you believe those coaches? Did you believe what they were saying to you? Hard to say. I mean, after any moments that I would have on the field, I wouldn't hear from the coaches again. So maybe it was just because it made them look good for a moment. I don't know. Mm. So did you decide based off of you feeling like they weren't really supportive to you, did you decide, well, maybe this isn't for me and I'm just going to give this up? No, I'd still complete the season. I just didn't want to be like noticed for it because like anything that they would give me praise for, I feel like I just wasn't doing good enough for it. Mm. I just didn't want to be noticed. Yeah. And that's from your father. That's not necessarily who you are. Do you, do you understand that? I don't know. How do I know the difference? Your father said things to you and it resonated and you felt something. You felt, well, I'm not good enough. You felt those things. But if you had any thoughts outside of that, that had to have been from you, from your inner being, from the, the, the creator that you, um, that you recognize. Yeah, I feel like that part, it doesn't really make sense to me because, like, how am I supposed to know what my value is when nobody's ever seen it? Like every time I do my best for something, it's usually criticized or told it's not good enough. And then I just get real angry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you release that anger? Do you just kind of bottle it up? And What I do is like, I just, I, I don't want to hurt more people uh, because like sometimes I get so angry and I just have to let it out somewhere. And so like, I usually have to work out or I have to go and like, just let it out somewhere or like a run or you know, something, but you should try and do a lot of workouts. And so I feel like I can at least turn it into what I feel like is progress. Mm -hmm. So if I just take all that anger and I just put the rage into the weights, it's kind of like my own kind of therapy, but mm -hmm. it, it still builds up like every day. So I have to like work out every day or else I'll just start going nuts after a couple of days of like 
all the kind of, I don't know, it feels like I suppress it, like, you know, the shame and stuff kind of builds up and I just have to go and push that out. So I might be in good shape and people are letting me know I'm doing a good job, but I don't feel like it. I feel like they're, I don't know. I feel like the waiting for the ball to drop. Like someone's things like you're doing a good job, but you know, you could do more. Or you're not as good as that person or you're not big enough or you're not strong enough. Yeah. And all of that I hear is just your dad talking over and over and over in your head. But I'm really glad that you have that space where you can release that, re that rage, at least with the workouts, at least with the running. Um, how often do you do the, the workouts and the running? Oh, I have, I have to do it every day. Otherwise it starts to build up too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And you do feel that relief. Uh, for for a little bit, it's just more like it feels more like I'm just trying to keep the Hulk from getting out. Like he just he, he keeps moving toward the door and I just got to keep moving it back. You know, it's one of those things. Mm -hmm. But I, it like builds up really quickly, though. And so I just got to keep working out, keep working out. But some days it gets pretty tough, you know. Yeah. So when does it usually build up after the workout? Is it maybe when you go to work, maybe when you go back home with your partner? Um. And it did different parts of the day it kind of just hits, you know, and like, you know, I'll be done, but like, it, it does get me now. Cause now that I'm older, I feel like when people start telling me not good enough, not good enough, man, you could do better. Or even if they're like, you throw in butts, I'll even be real with you. When people say, but like, I just, I, I just delete everything they said before that, you know, like, Oh, good job, man. But you could probably get this thing done a little faster. I'm like, yeah, it probably could be faster. Thanks. Mm. What else am I not doing right for you? Mm. Yeah. But what about for yourself? What are you doing right for yourself? Mm -hmm. When I go to work or I do my stuff, I get a paycheck still. So I guess I can, I don't know, pay some bills. When's the last time you've done something like maybe take a trip or go out with your, your partner? Like money ends up being pretty tight. So there's not really a lot of options to go do that. Like we don't really have enough money to like go for like a nice trip or go out of the country or anything like that. So I mean, we could probably do a local thing, but that's not really the same. Mm -hmm. So when have you done that? Something, something local? I don't know. We'll go grab some food or something. I don't know what you mean. Uh, I mean, just maybe a trip to maybe a downtown area, uh, maybe a road trip to some neighboring cities, uh, maybe spend a night at a hotel in a neighboring city, something like that. Uh, if she wants to do something, sure. I just don't want to pick the wrong place and just have it become a thing. You know, sometimes I'll have an idea and it just won't go well. And then like, I just won't be, I just don't want to be like, it's just not going to be right. And she's going to say like, you could have done better. Or you could have done it right. And it just won't be good enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Um, sometimes when you have that doubt and worry in your mind and you feel like, oh, you know, things will go wrong. I want you, I want to challenge you to say, what if things go right? Just start with that. Just saying, okay, usually I, I feel that things go wrong, but what if they go right this time? What if they go right? Just say that one time. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll tell you what's coming up. Even if I go like, well, what if it goes right? What if it goes right? Well, then it's just going to raise the bar on expectations to make it so that I'm going to end up having to live up to this new expectation and just have, be like, harder to live up to it like how am i gonna if i raise the bar and i what if it goes right what if it goes right well then i have to do it that right every time and i have a very low percentage of doing things right yeah you're talking about perception and expectation and being able to have a more optimistic outlook not the same so whatever happens happens but what if things go right even if something quote unquote goes wrong, or maybe it goes the same way that it has the last five times. But what if I change my thought process on this? What if, okay, you know, as long as we get out and we get to see a new place, we get to have a new experience. And I have this with my partner. We get to share in this. I really love her. I really love the way that she wears her hair. I really love the way that she smells and just taking those little steps to say, okay, this this time is different. This time can be different. It can be different. I'm not giving you, I'm not giving you a promise, but I'm giving you a, a, a different outlook. And usually when we have a different outlook, have you heard of the reticular activating system in our brain? No, I never heard of it. 
Yeah, well, it's a system that when we start to put things out there, maybe we write something down or maybe we ask a question, our brain will start filling in information to help us to to connect with what we've already processed in our mind. If I say something about, you know, a red horse, close your eyes and don't visualize a red horse. You will be able to see a red horse because I've said it and you can't filter that out because I've put it out there. And so, again, with you being able to say, well, what if things go right? It's going to activate that system in your mind to say, okay, let's give this a shot. And then things will start to show up for you. Maybe not in a, in a grandiose way, but we're looking for small changes for you. We're looking for small changes. So if you can, planning a trip with your partner one weekend, maybe going to get a, a, a room somewhere, something local, it doesn't have to be extravagant, but just you and your partner having some time to get away and looking for what if things go right. All right, I'll give it a shot. Let's, uh, I'll give it a. Tr- I'll give it a shot, and then if she breaks up with me. I'm blaming you. Okay, blame me. <laughs> then you find another one. Because yeah. What if you can find another one? Uh, I'm gonna have to practice a little more. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with the trip first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for that. That was. I was I'm role playing with you on this yeah, one. Yeah. You saw. You saw. I. Uh, I went into, I, I'm glad that you caught that I went into doubt pretty much most of the time. Yes. It started with anger. But I'm like, doubt, 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 <laughs> doubt, 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 doubt. Oh, come on now. Give me a light. Come on. <laughs> it was all doubt. I was like giving you all doubt stuff. Yeah. And so I saw you, like, I see you with doubt and worry. I'm like, there she is. She got me. <laughs> and I, I, I love that, that back and forth. I, I've never done that in a podcast before where we actually role play. So I enjoyed it. It's, that. It's tough when we, we miss the pieces because a lot of times we'll, we'll try and give a tool without knowing which curse it is. Mm. And I was giving you all doubt curses. Yeah. That was all doubt, doubt, doubt. Yeah. It starts off because it manifests as my defense system is to anger. Mm. And anger looks like attack. Attack can disguise, it, can disguise itself as confidence, but it's false confidence because I'm actually not confident and I need you to stay the fuck away from that. <laughs> so I'm going to be aggressive and angry mm. to keep you away from knowing that I'm not actually feeling worthy. Mm. I won't be chosen. And the more that somebody knows I'm not good enough, the more likely they're going to be gone. So I don't want to do things to expose that I'm not good enough because mm. then they'll just leave. It's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point. So, Oh boy. Yeah. And that's why we say, well, what if, what if things go right? What if just a yeah. little opening makes a big <laughs> I, difference. I heard that from David Goggins the first time mm. he said, he said, people always like, what if it goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? I was like, what if you nail it? What if you rock it? Mm. Oh, Goggins, that guy's a badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, you want me to give you one of my tools? I'll give you, I'll give you one for doubt. This is one of the things I've done as a mastery for doubt. Mm-hmm. And you're going to like this one because you're the sim- a similar warrior type to me. Mm. Um, I'll give you the definition of doubt and I'll show you how to beat it in one sentence. You ready? Yeah. Doubt. The definition is doubt offers nothing, but takes from you everything. Mm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you how to challenge it. I don't feel like I'm going to be good enough. I feel like I'm not, I'm not, no one's going to love me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not tall enough, not strong enough. I'm not whatever. I'm not good. I'm not bad. I'm I'm, I'm all these negative things. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a dream or an idea and that's not going to work, that's a stupid idea. You can't do that. These are all doubt, right? Right. Doubt offers nothing but takes everything. Doubt attacks you through motivation. That's how it gets into your feelings. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to do, it tries to ruin that thing you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So let's challenge it. So let's say you like you want to pick any goal, like name any goal. I don't care if it's weight loss, start a business, build a nonprofit, you know, name any goal in the world. Um, well, I'd like to finish my MD program in two years. Yeah, but most people end up quitting anyways on that. It's not likely even statistically that you'll do that. So what it kind of seems like a waste of time. Mm, okay. Now, now Scooby on how to get out of that. What's my offer? What Did I offer you a better class? Did I offer you oh, a new nothing. opportunity? Did I offer you a better way to do it? <laughs> no, nothing. All I just said was I made up some bullshit statistic mm-hmm. and then said that won't work. Mm-hmm. What am I giving you as an alternative? To prove you wrong. <laughs> well, that's a motivation style. Right, but right. what did I offer you? BS. Nothing. Mm-hmm. There is no. If you listen to me, you just cancel a dream. 
cancel your potential, cancel something that you would love to do. You just get rid of something that would make you happy in, in your life. I fulfilled something. I did something difficult. I'm proud of myself. And this leads me down the path to be able to do something that I love to do that helps others, provides for my family, makes my life better. That's all the potential that's there. But if I said statistically, it doesn't work. So why try? You should quit. I offer you nothing, but I want to take from you everything. Mm, yeah, yeah. So here's how you beat doubt very quickly. Well, I notice I now have a choice. I can have all of this potential and possibility, or I can have a guarantee for nothing. Which do you choose, Janice? Oh, definitely that potential. Well, then I decline your offer for nothing, but thank you for the offer. <laughs> yes. It's okay that people offer nothing. You can simply decline the offer. So if you're like, I'd like to, I don't know, you know, people, I want to lose 20 pounds. You're like, you're not going to keep it off. You can't do that. Tell me the last time you successfully kept 20 pounds off. What's the offer? So then they could either go for something that would make them feel better in their own body, or they can do nothing at all and stay where it is and have a guaranteed fail. I like that. I like that. Which one do you choose? Choose my, my slim, trim body. So if you recognize there's no offer here, it's a lot easier to decline nothing than it is for you to destroy everything. Mm. Now let's go into despair. Combine doubt offers nothing and takes from everything. Your grieving system, its partner and grieving system is depression, sadness. Now depression, the way that works is going to be that shame stack. I'm a piece of shit. I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. I'm all alone. I'm so sad. It's just going to keep stacking and stacking and stacking. And our internal self-talk is brutal. Now throw some doubt in there. No wonder I'm not good enough. I don't think I deserve love. I'm unworthy of being able to try anything. What's the point in even doing anything? It's just going to fail anyways. Start stacking in shame and doubt together. This combination creates that despair. And despair, when it gets heavy enough, turns to apathy. When apathy kicks in, you become the personification of doubt. This means instead of doubt offers nothing and takes from you everything, now it turns into you becoming doubt. Mm. It takes, like you become nothing and it takes from you everything. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to make a phone call. I don't want to get off the couch. I don't want to talk to anybody today. I don't want to go to the bathroom. I don't want to work out. I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. You become nothing. And that sounds like depression as well. It is depression. Yeah, yeah. Despair. That's, that's, that's what apathy is, is, is when it gets to the point, the way that you beat depression is you have to catch that inner monologue. Mm. And that's the awareness that we were talking about earlier. Catch mm. the awareness of how are you talking to you? Mm. Because you'll notice you're kicking your ass all day. Mm -hmm. And if you catch that early, the uh, analogy I use for this is uh, if you've ever seen a truck driving and hit mud, like if you catch it, like, oh, well, you hit mud, you can go back and forth, back and forth and turn yourself out and get out of it. Mm -hmm. But if you hit mud and just keep spinning the wheel, mm -hmm. you'll sink all the way down till frame hits the ground. Yeah, I like that. Depression is the same way. So like if you catch it early, you can go, oh, no, 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 stop the self-talk. Let's get some new info. Let's release some of this. Let's figure out what's going on. Because if you can prevent it, it stops the intervention being needed. Mm -hmm. And so the truck analogy would be we can catch it early and pull ourselves out. But as soon as the frame hits ground, you need a tow truck. Mm -hmm. It's prevention before intervention. Okay. And it's the same thing with people. If you can catch like, hey, I got to talk about this. I got to get this out. I got to sort this out before I beat myself into submission and I don't do any motivations. I don't have any good feelings about myself. My beliefs are all that I can't do it and I'm not good enough and I'm a piece of shit. And that becomes my identity before that becomes that. If we catch it before that, you don't need somebody to come in and help you dig out. Mm -hmm. yeah. But once you hit apathy, you're going to need somebody like me or you to come get you. Mm -hmm. I got to come and get you. You're yeah. stuck. Mm -hmm. And now we gotta, we're going to have to dig you out because you dug it in good. We got to get you out of here and then we got to tow you out of this thing. Mm -hmm. So doubt is a nasty curse, but he's, he's beatable in one sentence. Mm -hmm. You're never going to make it as a coach, Janice. Oh, I don't accept that. I didn't. I'll take my possibilities and my clients and the, 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 the love and the joy that I bring to people's life. I'm, I'm going to take that instead. No going. one's going to listen to you. I know where you came from. No one's going to listen to you. Oh, I don't accept that either because people are going to listen because of where I came from. Yeah. This is where you can see. What am I offering? Absolutely nothing. 
when people can catch that and they say, like, my dad said I wasn't good enough. Well, what was he offering you? Nothing. Right. Well, you have to choose then. You can actually be something that's worth being good enough or you can choose to not do anything and he's right. Mm. Which one do you want to do? Mm. Possibility and potential or guaranteed nothing. When you can catch it, it's beatable in one sentence. You like that weapon? That I one's do. pretty solid. I do. That's... I really do. And I'm just like the the wheels are turning in my head, no pun intended. But it's like my my thoughts on that are yeah, yeah. That that I mean that's exactly true. It's like being able to recognize like you got your hand out with absolutely nothing in it, nothing to to give to me. And I think getting to that place where you can see it in a like a physical way like for me i I like visuals and and so i'm like imagining like with with someone coming up to me saying something like whether it's doubt or whatever it's like what is this person offering me Hmm, Mm -hmm. i choose not and i i think too just being able for me to say i i know what i've been through i know what i've come from what i've come through and so i know that this person who's an outsider really has no impact it's it's the hard part is is when it's an insider saying it, mm. when it's a parent or an aunt or a best friend, yeah. a lover. Yeah, I still consider those outsiders because I. I <laughs> Who's an insider for you? It's just me. It's just me oh, here. <laughs> it sounds lonely in there. <laughs> but you know, I'm an only child, and I was homeschooled for about six years, so I've learned how to master and and enjoy my solitude, but. I I do filter in what people are saying, no matter how close they are to me, how long I've known them. Um, But again, I just kind of with a grain of salt. Well, that's your armor talking. I know that armor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We do a lesson on armor where we call it protection. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, I know how to keep myself safe. Mm -hmm. I know how to do this. I'll keep myself behind here. I know I got my defenses up. Mm -hmm. I've got my, I've got things. You can't hit me with this negativity. Block that. You can't hit me with that negativity. I'll block that. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to try and get close, anybody wants to try and get in here, they got to go through the metal detector. They got to get pat down. They got to do the survey. Mm -hmm. They got to do a lie detector test. And then maybe they can get in the first, the first area. Mm -hmm. And you're like, it's interesting that you're calling this protection because it sounds a lot like prison. Because mm, mm, mm. you're all alone, solitary, blocking all the bad stuff out, looking at the world through your bar and calling it safety. Mm, mm. But nobody can get in there unless they go through this strenuous test for love. Mm. And even still, you're not going to really get in. It's just me in here. Mm, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know if that's going to be the strongest armor for your fighting style. Because on the other side, you have to remember, too, I was just talking to Dr. Saperstein, and he hit me with something that was like a good reminder. I was like, damn, good call. Do you think that we are a predator animal or a prey animal? I think it depends. I mean, in, in uh, depending on what environment that you're in. I like your answer. How do you see that? I'm curious. Well, I mean, for me, just thinking of it like right now, I mean, in this type of setting, I'm, I'm a predator. You know, in, in the, the state of emotions and maybe uh, I'll, I'll keep it in this state where I'm talking about emotional intelligence. I'm a I'm a I'm a predator. I know how to okay. go at it. I know how to, you know, recognize where people are. And I, I've learned how to help people pull people out of where they are at. Um, but maybe in a state of or in a subject that I'm not so well versed in, um, I will be prey. I like it. I like how you made this a mindset battle. When it comes to the animal kingdom, predators and prey comes down to the tools that are given to them. Mm -hmm. What kind of teeth do we have? Do we have sharp canine teeth that can rip meat open like a tiger or a lion? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't. We got flat teeth. Do we have blunt fingers or do we have claws that retract and destroy? Mm -hmm. We don't have claws. We don't have sharp teeth. We don't have heightened senses like other animals do. Most predators have advanced senses by far more than ours. We are a prey animal. We are not a predator animal. We are a prey animal. Now, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because our big, beautiful brains has kept us at the top of the food chain, which I think people don't appreciate nearly enough that we're out of the food chain. (laughs) I think you do know everything in the food chain dies like this. Ah! Ah! 
ah! like like you're being ripped apart <laughs> until something eats you alive like so that's the food chain we get to like we're gonna die like this i love you so much yeah <laughs> thank you for a good life <clears throat> like 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 we're the only things that get to die in our sleep or something like we're, like everything else is ripped apart and killed like so we're prey animals though this also means that we're herd animals people want to say you know we'll use pack leader we're all we're social creatures right now, this is another thing I learned from uh, a really high level coach in leadership and spirit side. Um, it was Maria Kellis. And she was talking about there's so much information for all of us to contribute. And there's so too much for any one person to have all of it. So think of how much information there is as like the ocean. But we're only able to, to handle like a bucket full of that. That's all we got is our bucket. So each of us will take some, but each of us will get a different gift. And you have a different gift right. and I have a different gift right. and other people have different gifts. And the point of our herd animal is to make it so together we put all of our gifts together and create something powerful. Now it can be for good or it could be for evil, yeah. but it's powerful either way yeah. because we all contribute our pieces together because we are a pack animal. Yeah. Yeah. And I now, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. how do you make our animals the weakest? What do and what do they do? If you had like buffalo, for example, this is a this is a grazing animal. But if you put them all in a phalanx, if you line them all up in a circle around the babies, those wolves quit. Mm -hmm. They're like, ah, we can't get in there. They're gonna fuck us up now. Yeah, yeah. Still a prey animal. You can't fuck with that buffalo. You will stomp a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> right. But wolves still kill the buffalo. How do they do it? Numbers. They get the one away. Mm. Isolation. This oh, is why when you oh. talked about, this is the way you talked about when like, I'm going to blame and shame and guilt and judge this guy or the strong person or the strong woman. I'm going to take you out of the pack. I'm going to take you out of the herd. Because when you're by yourself and you're isolated and you're six feet away and you don't leave your house mm -hmm. and you just stay at home, mm -hmm. well, then I can fill you with all the algorithms I want. Yeah. And I think for me, and I, I like the point that you've made, um, and I do, I be in the way that I, I've been most of my life, I have had a, a long period where I've had a fence up. And for me now, understanding, again, the emotional side where it's like, if I am interacting with someone and I feel joy and I feel lit up and I feel fulfilled after that conversation, that's somebody I'm going to pursue to keep around me in my space. But if there's someone that is in my space that I constantly feel drained when I talk to them or we're, we're not connecting, we're not seeing eye to eye. Those are the people that I just kind of say, okay, you know, I, I, it doesn't have to be a drama situation, but I just kind of let them drift or let them fade. You know, we'll talk when we can, this and that. Um, and I, yeah, I, I keep my circle small for that reason. Um, but at the same time, I'm way more open now than I've been previously, um, even with having conversations where I'm, I'm being criticized or I'm being judged or whatnot. And so I, I'm, I'm in a way better place than I was in, but it's still, I, I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, it, there are some, um, not hoops that people have to jump through per se, but there's some things <laughs> that there's some criteria, you know, sure. and I feel like that should be the case for everybody. You know, I do want a, a pack. I do want my, my tribe to be strong. Um, but I, I'm selective about the tribe. Mm -hmm. People mess up healthy boundaries all day. Yeah. Yeah. And they mess up boundaries. Like they think boundaries is me telling you how you should be. That's demands. That's not boundaries. Well, well, you, you need to be this way and you need to be this way and you need to be this way. It's like, well, if that's who I am and how I conduct myself, then there's certain things that I can, I can, I feel comfortable in asking for somebody and if they accept it, fine. If they don't accept it and based on how the conversation goes from there, I'll decide like, oh, okay, you know, maybe this is something I'm being irrational about. They're right. You know, I shouldn't have this as something that I consider a boundary or, you know, they're wrong and we'll see how things go. Or if it's a situation where it blows up, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'm actually curious I, as far as personality types, I think you and I may be the same personality type. Mm -hmm. Um, have you ever done like an Enneagram or anything like that to know like your personality type? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I'm an I, 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 
No, no, that's Myers. That's Myers Briggs. Oh, okay. Well, then no, I haven't. Enneagram done that. was the numbers. There's nine numbers. Oh no, then I haven't done that. One. No. All right, have fun with that one, and then like just message me the results. Uh, my guess is I'm I'm putting you either as a type eight, which I think that you are, mm. as a challenger, which is natural leader type. But the toxic side is strong and aggressive and don't mess <laughs> with me. I think if, if they had a bumper sticker for the uh, the type eight, it would be fuck around and find out. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, this is how we can usually tell. Does the word fuck make you happy? Um, You know what? No, it, it really, really doesn't. No. Okay. Then, it, then we'll go the other side because if you were type three mm-hmm. – this would mean like achievement would be more important. I have to be able to win. I have to be able to get it right. And I don't need the emotions and I don't, I don't need to look bad. I don't need to have a false a perception of people making like seeing me for something that's not good. Does that resonate at all? Or that, that doesn't feel right. That does resonate some, um, especially with the, the education that I'm pursuing and everything like that. I want to be that person. And when I hear that and I, a short story, um, growing up, I was really close to a cousin of mine. And like when we were small, she was really pretty. She had long, pretty hair and stuff like that. And I was chocolate as I am now. Um, and I was a tomboy. And so every time we'd be around each other, people would say, oh, you know, she's so pretty. And then Janice, you're so smart. And so that's been my thing all, my whole life. I've been conditioned to want to appear to be smart. And if I if I look dumb, if I look stupid in front of people, it's just like I feel like my whole identity is just kind of like in in in. in jeopardy you know um so yeah that that's i, I do resonate okay yeah j- just so i can see then it could be a, a type three this is the achiever the champion mm-hmm. the I, do you yeah do you <laughs> also identify as uh like almost do you fall under like that workaholic and like distract yourself by doing like more and more and more i do at times yeah mm-hmm. yeah just let me know do you do the test on this it can be right like it's just i just want to it's just more curiosity mm-hmm. than anything. it's more for fun like it's not gonna this this isn't like a profile thing it's just like <laughs> yeah let's just see what it is could be it's just a fun thing to know thyself yeah yeah you I, I imagine you putting that on the title for this talk like she's a type three janice dancy type three for the- <laughs> no no we're gonna we'll probably have some fun challenging thing like you know conquering society's bullshit or something we'll call it Ooh. something tough like we'll call it something. We'll call it something tough. I, I've enjoyed this so far. Let me make sure I'm good on time because I want to keep going. Um, yeah, I still have. I have another podcast in two hours, so we still got time. Okay. 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 All right. I like the stuff so far that we've beaten. I'm gonna let's jump into the next topic. And thank you for doing like the role play. That's cool. We killed some doubt stuff together. Fighting in depression. We haven't gotten into the meanest ones yet, but maybe we will. Okay. So. I want another one. I like that toxic masculinity thing. You're like, let's get rid of that shit. We threw some golden rule in there and that's going to trigger some people. Good. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Give me another one where you've been watching people. just kind of like where you just do What's that? SMH. I've been shaking my head. Like, (sighs) come on, guys. Give me another one where if you could go, society, wake up. Give me another one where you just see something and you're like, uh. oh, my gosh, I feel like there's so much. And there's some things that are be more taboo than others. <laughs> but, Listen, I got no rules on you here. You, right. you may you may help somebody get out of some bullshit. <laughs> OK, so what's the hatred towards Donald Trump? I'm just going to say it. what's all the hatred? Listen, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't jump on either side, but I lost friends for not jumping on a side. I know I'm not there either. And part of me is like, okay, yeah, I don't like the way that he would address the crowd and the, 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 just how belligerent he would be sometimes, but is his core policy so wrong? Are they so wrong? If if I look at it indifferently, like not like because people go towards their their personal opinion on character Re- really quickly, it almost seems like the only thing I've ever seen is the argument is like I just don't like how he is. I'm like, yeah, but what did he do? I just don't like how he talks. I don't like how he acts. I don't like how he is. There was a, and like you've never seen a bigger smear smear campaign for a president ever. Oh. And like this is usually for me whenever I see anybody trying to create smear campaigns. This is propaganda tactics for anything. I don't care what the topic is. If some everybody's trying to go like this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. All of a sudden, well, 
He used to be like the man before he was president. He was in the rap used, songs. He was he in was, all the rap. Yeah. Oh, he was he, a hero. He was the man. He was the man before. But then all of a sudden media started saying he's bad. And I actually had friends like send me propaganda stuff where I'm like, I'm not really in either party on this one. But like this is there's no quote here. There's no video here. There's nothing here. And it's like, well, so and so his person in his cabinet is trying to turn the whole country into the KKK. And I'm like, first off. <laughs> That would never work. Oh. Second off, where did you get that from? <laughs> like, I, no one's ever heard anything. Like this, and even if they were trying to do that, that could never work. <laughs> like, that's not even a possibility. <laughs> so, like, I don't know if I can buy this. And they're like, "What are you? This guy's attorney or something?" And I'm like, "I don't. I don't think I'm his attorney. I'm just saying I don't see a single piece of evidence. This is just a hate article." Yeah. Like, so I can't buy it. But like people would, they would get really triggered that I wasn't just filling the, the space with more hatred. Right, right. Now, also, like I, I, I grew up in Detroit, Janice, like most of my, like my best friend growing up and I lived with for many years, like and most of my guys, I was the white guy mm. with my black friends. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so like all of this stuff where I'm sitting here watching, like this is, this is supposed to be like some sort of attack on like black people and stuff like that. I'm talking to my buddy. I'm like, is that happening, dude? <laughs> and he's like, ah, I haven't had it yet. I'm like, huh. And we've been together for like 25 years and I don't remember any of that shit. Like, is that happening? Like, Hey, I got you if it is. And they're like, He's like, I don't know. But then I have other friends who are like, man, we're going to war, dude. And I'm like, oh, shit. With who? <laughs> With who? who are we? Who? And they're like, if our friend was getting, if he was getting, he was losing the fight, what would you do? I'm like, fighting who? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, who is it? Is somebody coming over? I'll come over. Mm -hmm. I got your back. If someone's going to come over to your house, I'll, I'll be there. Is somebody there? <laughs> I don't know who we're fighting. And it was enough for me to ask these questions. It wasn't picking a side, but just being clear to make it so long friendships. We I, I haven't talked to them in many years because like they got caught in an algorithm that never existed before for us. Yeah. 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 And that's re it was really interesting to me. Actually, there's a podcast called mixed nomad. You can hear we did like 15 episodes and that friend hit me with an ultimatum and he's half black, half white. Like, and I've, we've been friends for like 20 years. And like, all of a sudden it became an issue. And I was like, why? Mm -hmm. He's like, pick a side. And I was like, I, I never picked a side before. Why do we have to do that all of a sudden? I thought, why is there this? But the polarization, I think this is where I'm with you, where I can't, I can't say a single positive for Biden. That guy, if Trump did half of this stuff, right. he would have been like that Afghanistan thing where we just oh, gave oh, all oh. of the stuff over to the end, like billions and billions of equipment just given to like people who openly hate us. Like, like they, they were trying to impeach Trump because they just didn't like him. Oh, but if he gave the, in, his, in a closet in Mar -a -Lago or whatever, whatever. Like, I'm just, I'm just saying like, if, if he were to have given billions of dollars of like high tech equipment to the people who hate us the most, that would have been an easy impeachment. It makes Watergate look like, right. like, like, peanuts right. we, well the media didn't hit that hard enough so we just breeze past that one mm -hmm. like if if we don't take like sides into account that by itself should be like you're not a competent leader mm -hmm. for this you just they were they were in afghanistan for decades mm -hmm. and just left it all there yeah. keys in the keys in the plane yeah, yeah. you're like i don't think that was a good idea Ridiculous, ridiculous. And it's like a lot of the other things that have happened since then with, you know, us helping in this proxy war and everything like that. It's just like things that have look, nothing to do with us. But how many billions of like we, we weren't even in alliance with Ukraine. Mm. Ukraine was not a part of anything. Mm. And there's a lot of stuff going on there. That's not our fight. Right. But I, we went to Colorado this year. We uh, we like to just go visit nice places. So we went to Colorado. I loved Colorado Springs. We were there a few years before, like right when COVID started, we were there. Okay. Beautiful city. Mm -hmm. Colorado Springs is what they call a, a Goldilocks um, city because the altitude makes it so even when it's hot, it's still cool. Mm -hmm. And when it's cool, it's still warm. Mm -hmm. Like it's like this Goldilocks area of like it's always a nice temperature, never too humid, never too like dry. It's just it's always just right. You know, and so like it was beautiful there. We were there a few years ago. We just went this year and there's homeless people everywhere. Wow. 
all over the place. And there's a lot of cities. Philadelphia has got it. There's uh, L.A. You got all these places where homeless people are rampant. Why are we sending billions to a country that's not even one of our countries, like not even one of our allies? Why are we sending billions there when our own people are living on the street? Mm-hmm. And don't even get me started with impoverished areas, especially black communities. Yeah, yeah. I'm in like, the Chicagoland area and I see it all the time. Yeah. I'm listen, I'm in Rockford. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an hour and a half from you. South Chicago is crazy. What's downtown is nuts right now. And we've seen, because if I'm, I'm near you then, it, we've seen what's going on. Like, um, you know, my girl works in retail down there. She runs all the stores down there. Okay. And like you've seen, it's just like a full scale attack of stealing. Mm-hmm. Even just this past weekend, I believe some of the teens went down there and were looting and things like that. So it's- what is that? What, how is we, we're, we're doing all this stuff over in countries that aren't our people. But then we're not taking care of our people. Right, right. And, my and if you're going to say for him, you know, I feel for him. But at the same time, can we take care of home first? <laughs> home's not OK, though. Mm-hmm. And so but this is where if you took billions, these billions of dollars and I'll even throw it in. Let's just let's just let's just go ahead and like mess the whole economy up. If you took billions and threw them into the black community to say, let's clean this place up and fix it up. Because I have friends like even like, you know, pastors and stuff who like they take like the kids and they go, we're going to fix the sidewalks. We're going to paint this house or this building. It changes everything when the place looks nice. Yeah, yeah. So we could take this money and fix a community and put some community centers in there. I just did a podcast with a uh, Carlos Henry, mm-hmm. sharp black kid, super smart. I loved hanging out with him. He was great. He's like, one of his goals is to bring more research areas into the, the impoverished areas. So you can have a place to go read have a place to do the work, have a place to practice, have a place to learn. Mm-hmm. He's like, there isn't those There's party stores and there's, you know, Chinese food and there's all this stuff. It's like the cash to go. He's like, that's not, that just keeps us down. Where's our learning centers? Yeah. Yeah. And I think to the culture, if we can invest more into putting more positivity out in our culture, you know, you hear a lot of, like we talked about earlier, the rap and the the music and the things that we listen to, but they're funded by a lot of these big corporations, you know, and it's steadily, you know, listen, amplified. you want to, you want to, I don't know if you watched it yet. I just watched the clone Tyrone last night. I didn't see it yet. Okay. It's Jamie Foxx movie. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> Me- message me when you watch it because okay, I don't want to spoil it. Okay. Watch it because it's funny. Because at first I'm like, all right, Jamie Foxx is a pimp, and I'm like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. I- all right, I'm watching it. Started like kind of comedic, but then it kind of got into this whole like brainwashing thing and how they they operate through rap and through you know you know juice or food or the community stuff mm-hmm. to control or to experiment on the population mm-hmm. there because no one's gonna go in there. Mm-hmm. It was. It's pretty wild. Just, just check it out. Okay. Give me your, give me your thoughts. Okay. But like, it's those kind of things where like, there's a lot of programming in there. Yeah. There's a lot of programming that needs to be checked. And there's, and one thing I will say praise, cause like I said, I'm plugged into a lot of my friends that are in the black community going, we're pushing back. Mm-hmm. We don't have to hold ourselves down, you know? And this is where black women have been like whoosh, kicking ass black men though, whoosh, crashing. Mm-hmm societally something is going very negative for the guys Mm -hmm. but women are now achieving more than ever but the guys are tanking yeah yeah and And these numbers are staggering it's like way what's going on with our guys yeah and i think a lot of it is because of the push of you know murderous lyrics and you know just crabs in a bucket type of mentality when it comes to our men and so we Mm -hmm. think that that's normal or they think that that's normal and that's the way you're supposed to be and so all of their focus is going on. How can I be bigger and badder and more of a baller than the next guy instead of what, what can I do to build my family, my legacy, myself? Right. And so being a, re- being a pack leader instead of being a, a lone wolf. Mm, yeah, there you, go. there you go. You know, and this is where like, what's an alpha? An alpha is an actual leader who builds and encourages and nurtures and constructs and makes protects. They make things better for those around them. Yeah. But but people are trying to they're trying to make themselves fit into something that is incorrect. I'm a sigma. You are not a fucking sigma. (laughs) 
No, a sigma is like the 0.01% of the super introverts who have become like ascended confident. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you are not one of those. <laughs> no, you're a really aggressive beta. Mm -hmm. And this is, it mimics as hard as they can what they believe alpha is. But there is only take only conquest, only get theirs, only be like the, the loudest or the most bling. But really it's, it's the same thing as that anger thing as that lady that says you deserve to die. Mm. It's all just a gamble and a front to keep you away from that void inside of me. That is not confident. That is not secure. That does not have the finances. That does not have the, 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 the leadership to actually build and encourage and nurture and be an empathetic leader. I don't have any of those traits. It's just get mine. Mm. And even if you make it to the top, it crashes way too quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give a shout out to a friend of mine, Superset Ted. So Superset Ted used to train, he used to tour with Ludacris oh. back in the day. Uh -huh. And he became a friend of mine because he lived in the same building as me. But People didn't talk to him too much because he's got tattoos all over his face yeah. and he's pretty intimidating looking, but I just like talking to him. I was like, what's up, dude? Yeah. And I found out some of his backstory and he made it to the top and then made some choices because he didn't understand that place and it took him right off and his depression was absolute. Mm -hmm. He's just working at like, you know, one of the car shops, the factories. Mm -hmm. he used to be at the top, touring, 10,000 people in the stadium, getting everybody hype. He was the man. All of that taken away, all of it gone. He lost all of all pieces, all purpose, all everything. And nobody cared. Nobody cares when you make a fall like that. Him and I work together. He's writing albums again. He's, he's already finished two albums. He's already sent me messages. Like our conversations are the reason I'm building again. Wow. wow but awesome. he was beaten down. There was no alpha. There's no leadership because he had all of it given, not earned. And a lot of this mentality is give, give, give. I'm trying to be a taker. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to give and build. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part of society on that. That's like, listen, this is not good. Now go in the other side of it. If things aren't going well, what are the solutions? And this is both in rap and in country. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not familiar with country so much, but I did. I, oh, I think you. I think you won't be shop, shocked with the commonalities. Oh, okay. Because I was getting ready to say, it's like there are, I, and I listen to a lot of these underground artists that speak on like con just being conscious and being aware of what you're saying, how you're presenting yourself, our community, and how to uplift ourselves within our community. Um, but why is that underground? That should be the top stuff. Because they don't sound. And I, one thing that I'm, I'm unpacking, and I'm in the process of unpacking, is that this culture that talks about taking somebody's life, it gives that sense of power. It gives that sense. Of, they, if people are feeling powerless. Put on a rap song where I'm taking somebody's life and I'm playing God. That gives me a mm -hmm. sense of power. And that gives sounds, me sounds like a true prey animal acting tough. There you go. And so, again, when we can't find the empowerment in other ways, then we go to that because it's easily accessible. We hear it on the radio. We hear it on, mm -hmm. you know, social media all the time. It's easy to access. And plus, it resonates with that 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 longing that we have for that power. And so I think that a lot of that has to do, again, going back to emotions, um, if we can find a way to help show them that you have power outside of taking someone's life, you have power in in the the, the way that you you be just the way that you be they can find that freedom yeah i think it's interesting on this too because um people think that being tough means being mean but how much harder is it being strong and not needing to like knowing when to use it it's yeah. trained and untrained and being reckless does not make you strong it makes you weak yeah you yeah. do not have control of yourself yeah. you do not have emotional intelligence yeah. just because i can hurt somebody doesn't mean i'm stronger the fact that I run around trying to hurt everybody is exposing that I don't have control mm -hmm. and it's a false sense of control. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Real alphas. I've hung out with world-class fighters. I've trained with guys who are top five in the world. Wow. Yeah. These guys are not flexing on anybody. Mm -hmm. It's the guys who are just tough enough to think they have to flex. And you're not wrong when you're saying it's a societal setup in just these impoverished areas. That's the crabs in the bucket. Mm -hmm. In order to beat that, we have to show there's more than just the bucket. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, and this is tough. And even like, you know, I, I would meet guys who like, even in the Detroit area, they would know, like, they've never gone past the train tracks on that side. I get arrested. So I've never seen better. I don't go where the nice houses are. I don't go where there's dreams. I don't go there mm -hmm. because there's just bad things there. And it's, it's not too wrong. It's not too crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, because even when I would have my guys in the car, I, there would be like police stuff that would be pretty fucked up. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't like to the point of like this graphic abuse stuff, but it was just like, yes, eh, you can obviously see it's kind of fucked for treatment. It wasn't good, mm -hmm. you know, and so that stuff was there. Sure. But then there was also enough people who were coming over to create problems. Mm -hmm. Well, that exists too. And this is where I kind of, I go with any culture. It doesn't matter. White, black, you know, Latino, Asian, pick one. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. As people, if there's a stereotype, you can either perpetuate it or you can break it. Mm -hmm. You can either be it or you can create a new one. And if they're going to use like the stereotypes, what are the statistics I was watching? Uh, there's a few different people that I've seen, like uh, the statistics where like most, most of the people incarcerated are black people, but then also it's, per, it's also proportionately like the crime is much higher in the black community also. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're like, well, if that stereotype exists, that like more black people do crime. Well, if you have the ability now where black people now since BLM and stuff like this, there seems like this impunity to do whatever they want. And I've been watching in the malls and in the in the schools and whatever, just this way over the top pendulum shift. You wanted to oppress us. Now we're going to oppress everybody else. And you're like, you have the chance now to show that everyone was wrong about you. Mm -hmm. You have the chance now to show that if we weren't given any restrictions, if we were given the chance to rise, if we were given the chance to do what Martin Luther King said, like judge me by my character and not the color of my skin. If you were given the opportunity, what would you do? Yeah. And then we're watching these groups of kids go downtown and steal. Yeah, yeah. And you're going, oh, my God, don't do that. That's what my best friend says. He's like, oh, my God, they're making us look so bad. Why are you making us look bad? Don't make us look. We have a chance now to not look bad. Look awesome. Be awesome right now, please. Right, right, right. And I think for me, and a couple of things that you touched on, um, the stereotypes. Um, mm -hmm. As a young black woman, um, I get stereotyped, even whether it's, you know, overt or it's kind of, you know, um, but it, it's like a thing for me that I have to stand in who I am and I have to be solid in who I am in order to break free of that stereotype because a lot of times it's just like even if I dress a certain way and I don't wear my hair a bunch of different colors or whatever I'm still perceived just based on my skin color and so give me some, give me some examples because like as a black women like I don't I don't get to hear I talk with the guys so much more mm -hmm. so I want to hear like black women's point of view because like it's been different in the last handful of years. Mm -hmm. And so I want to hear like your perspective, just like even funny. I look like a white guy. I'm Asian. Like can't even, my last name is oh. Yi. <laughs> yeah. Like part Chinese. Like you can't even yeah, tell. Like, like God, it's all, or what? <laughs> yeah. My, no, my dad is, uh, my dad's side is all Chinese. My mom's side is all European. So I'm just this big mutt in the middle. So <laughs> like, it's funny. Cause like, they're like, you don't know. Like, what do you think? I'm from Germany. I'm with no German. What are you talking about? Like, it's, <laughs> so it's funny. Uh, I, I don't, I listen, I'm, a guy. I don't have any idea what you have to go through, but they, there's like this big fight where black women have had to fight and they're kicking ass right now. I am saying mm -hmm. like, if I look at the psychology numbers, black women are rocking right now, mm -hmm. but I want to hear your point of view. Like tell me, well, the numbers say that, but here's the battle. Yeah. Yeah. The battle I say for me, and it's again, it's not always so right in my face. Um, but sometimes it's little things like just being looked over in uh, a restaurant or being looked over in certain situations um, where I feel like, oh, OK, you know, I, I get curious. I'm like, well, if I were not me, a black woman, would I have gotten looked over or would I have gotten talked to in such a, a such a way? You know, cause sometimes people approach me in an aggressive way to start off with. And I, okay. I just said, hello, you know, that type of situation. So to stereotype me and for me being able to, OK, take that and say, OK, I don't know where they're at. They're projecting something on me and I'm not going to accept that and roll. Keep rolling as who I am. Keep rolling on as Janice. Keep rolling on as this person that I know I am working to be the best human that I can be, regardless of my skin color. 
that's the thing for me. I'm curious on something. Like I have a question, like this is where I get into belief filters and like how we see the world. And if somebody has a belief system, we will try and make the world fit into what we believe it is. Mm. So I wonder like, you know, if I were in the same situation, let's say we were out and you know, like I was the one who was passed over. Like, whatever. I don't know the scenario. Everybody's ordering drinks and they just kind of like forget about me or something like that. Mm-hmm. For me to go like, oh, they didn't get my drink. My first thought would be, is it because of the color of my skin? Or is it because I'm a male? Mm-hmm. Or is it because of my outfit? Or is it because of my beard? Mm-hmm. Like, if I start making a reason when they didn't say anything, mm-hmm. like if they were like, I don't serve white people, then I'd be like, well, at least I know what the thing is. Right, right, right. But if they didn't say anything then I would be adding in through my filter what I think it would be. Mm-hmm. And then so if you just add in, well, this may be a race thing when it may have just been a mistake thing. Mm-hmm. This makes it so like now I see the world through a filter of racism. Mm-hmm. Now, not to say you're misplaced, but I'm just saying experiences say what they are. And we all have different perspectives based on our existence. Right. You think it's possible that your belief system may add in oh, in yeah. a situation that may not be true? It, it it's possible. It is possible. And I, I've worked to get to a place where I can not take it and, and just make it about race instantly. Um, but sometimes you will see a difference in treatment between you and somebody else. Maybe that's in the same vicinity as you. So um, I think in those situations where I, it's noticeably obvious that, okay, I'm getting a different treatment. I think those are more so uh, the situations that I reflect on and say, yeah, maybe, you know, as a black woman, I'm getting this specific treatment. Um, but then there's other, like, like I said, little things that can happen too. Cause being a, a woman in the science field, I kind of, I, I'm the only black person. I'm the only black woman in the room. And so I, sometimes I feel like, Oh, you know, if I answer a question or if I'm more engaged, I'm, I'm told to pipe down, but maybe again, maybe that's just me and my personality because I'm, I, I want to be involved. And I know that that's the best way that I learn. Uh, but it's just like things like that. And I, I, I feel like sometimes I have to hold myself back in the space and I'm like, is that because of me being who I am? And it's, it's more so the questions being, ha- having to ask that question. Do, do you think that if like do you, like this is we're just curious on your opinion. Mm-hmm. Do you think that if you were like any other skin tone that it would be different? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Really? I think my perception for one would be different because I wouldn't have that to, to sure. fall back on. Yeah. I guess it would come into expectations. So I'm, let's just say, I don't know how many people are in like the, like you said, I'm the only woman in this crew or, or the only black woman in this crew. Mm-hmm. How many people are there? It's like 10, 15, 20. How many people are in that, like that, that, that area? Yeah. Some of those classes, it was like maybe 20 people. Okay. So statistically speaking, and if we, even if we just go male and female different, mm-hmm. last number I saw, it may be different now, is that in America, black people are what, 13% Around of the country? 30, yeah. Okay, so that would mean statistically speaking, we would have two point six people would be black in that in that twenty people. Mm-hmm. But if we just go numbers, right. how many people are there? Right, right. You know, so if it's ten people, one point three people would be the right. average. Right. So it would seem like just the numbers. Well, that would mean like there's ninety seven percent or there's eighty seven percent more other people mm-hmm. than black people. So why would it be equal when there's just way less? Yeah, I mean, it it wouldn't necessarily be equal in that space, but other other degrees, other programs would have more of my my race in there. Um, other like certain degrees or maybe certain um, different. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Um, just course types would have a different ratio in there. You know, but again, like sure. I said, the science. It goes even for males and females, especially STEM stuff. Like, yeah. even when they tried to, they tried to force it. I think it was in like Norway and like different like uh, Scandinavian countries. They tried to go like, no, we're going to make it equal. Mm. Like, and they thought like the the girls and guys would pick like equal things, but it actually made it more polarized. The girls went more towards the teaching, more towards the female, you know, dominated areas. Mm -hmm. And the guys went more towards the male dominated areas, like coding and computer work and stuff like this. They Mm -hmm. thought it would be equal, but it ended up becoming when they're like no restrictions, everybody can go into anything. It became more separate, Mm -hmm. not more equal. So this is where I'm wondering, like how much is it just like, people like what they like and not necessarily like a race or a gender thing. It could be gender thing where women just like different things. There's more women teachers, period. 
Right, right. And I think I, I wasn't necessarily speaking on whether my uh, my race would be more so involved other than just to say, well, because I was the only one involved, there was certain things that I, I felt more. I see. Mm-hmm. So it felt like like because maybe you felt I felt like I was isolated because of race that I felt I had different treatment. Yeah. At times. I, I wasn't there. So I have to ask. Right, right, right. Um, so at times, yes. Really? And give me a, give me an example because I'm trying to like put myself in your shoes. I've never been in your shoes, so right, I'm trying to understand. Right. And so I think for me, and going back to what you mentioned earlier, it may be my own perception, it may be my own expectations that had that made that uh, kind of thought process come about. Where it's like, okay, I'm the only person in here, so I'm kind of like, you know, yeah. in my in my own head, in my own thoughts. And so um, I think more of it may have been that. Uh, but there there have been times where I'm like, again, overlooked, where it's like obvious to me where um, I'll, I'll give an example where I had a physiology teacher where um, she would answer questions. And if it was something like elaborate, she had to answer. She would answer after class. And it's like, OK, whatever. But this particular person, like I felt like she was always short with me, like she would just kind of, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with you later, kind of just brushing me off. And I remember one particular day after class, um, I had asked her, I'd raised my hand to ask a question. She said she was going to address it after the class was over. And then a um, couple of other people at the end of the class came up and they had questions too. And so I, I was standing waiting for her to address me. And then she went on to address their questions. And then maybe 10 minutes it went by, I waited. And then I just left out of the classroom. I, I was just like, you know what? Never mind. Forget it. And she was like, what, what happened? And so I was like, never mind. If you're not going to answer my question, then I'm just going to go about my way. But then she sent an email to me and was saying, like, I, I don't know what happened, but I know that your question seemed like it was going to be a bit long. And so I waited to I was going to wait until after everybody left to answer your question to address you. So um, that was right. one situation where I was. Just so like, so is that a race thing or you're just impatient? Well, I felt like I waited a long time. Ten minutes is a long time when you are. Oh, hold on. Like, listen, we made you made up a rule. Mm-hmm. Ten minutes is a long time. You made that up. There was no agreement. There was no conversation on how long it's supposed to take. You just said, like, if I have to wait a time that I think is long, then I think it's wrong. Well, in addition to uh, other people coming up to her and her addressing them first and then mm-hmm. taking that amount of time. That. Well, she could she could have probably started off like I, you know Janice, yours are going to be a little longer, so give me a little bit. Let and me get the short ones impressed. out the way. I was never yeah, impressed. so that's that's just courtesy for like there's just people who are like just not good at that. Right. <laughs> that's, that's that's everybody though. So I don't. This is why I'm trying to go like, was it really racially motivated, or did we have to add it in? Because like I don't know. But it, it, if she would have said like I don't help black people, then I'd be like, right. oh, right. oh, I see you now. Right. But if she's like, no, there's just a lot of people and yours is a longer answer. So I have to get through these. And you're like, well, I don't like your system because it takes too damn long. <laughs> you're like, yeah, well, I felt like, yeah, she could have been courteous enough. And we had had like a little back and forth before. So I was like, maybe this was something she just felt like, well, I'm now I'm going to make you wait because, you know, I don't like you or, you know, you're you're a bother to me. So she didn't well, say that, well, that may not be race either. That could just people don't like people. <laughs> that just maybe that, too. Yeah. This is why this is why I try. I'm trying to see like because I, I really empath- empathetically am going like, is it a race thing that's happening or are we adding that in for people just being themselves? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just curious because like you know it, right now like I'm clumped in with the white cis male community, which is not getting loved right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Like we don't even have to be involved. Like I said, like when you're like, what's the Trump thing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not really on either side here. Mm-hmm. And they're like, but do you think? Where do you think I'd be clumped? I don't even have to be in the game to be in the game. I know, I know, I know. You know what I mean? And so then it goes into like, I'd be, I'm a Trump supporter according to just the color of my skin. Mm-hmm. And even for me, like I made a comment on um, Instagram a long time ago. There was a summit on revolt and Killer Mike, uh, T.I., Candace Owens and, and some others were on the panel. And mm-hmm. like somebody made a comment like, Trump can't be wrong about everything. And then I just kind of went, I was like, yeah, even a broken clock is right twice a day. And the hate <laughs> comments that I got from that comment alone. In- interesting hey. how this, let's get into this one. Cause we're emo- emotional intelligence and let's get into some real training. Mm-hmm. How ironic is it that people who cannot have proper discord want to try to bring peace 
as hate being the tool to do so. Is there, is there any irony here that I want everyone to be unified? Actually, I heard Jocko Wilnick say this one time where it was really funny how pre-COVID to post-COVID, how quickly a liberal person went from inclusion to exclusion. How quickly that can change. It used to be we should all be unified, everyone together. Together we're better. Let everyone be involved, let everyone in. And in such a short time, it's everyone but you guys. It's like, wait a second, weren't you the inclusion ones? But what just happened? You step on if you step on my dominant, you know, characteristics, then I'm excluding you. But you got to yeah, include well, me and everything. But but isn't but isn't that what you were just fighting the whole time before this? Wasn't that wasn't wasn't that the thing you were like, don't do? And now it makes sense to do. It is absolutely I'm a little confusing that it got switched so quickly and nobody caught that. Mm-hmm. You used to be we all are better together, and now it's like. All of those people are bad and we should hate them, right. cancel them, shut them down. Right. We're better together. As long as you go along with what we say, that's when we're well, better together. <laughs> could you imagine that unity slogan before? Oh my gosh. Yeah. This, is, this is a dangerous game is when people will take your comment and then hit you with hate. This gets back to the beginning with that toxic masculinity thing. Mm-hmm. Judgment, shame, blame, guilt saying nasty stuff. Is this the golden rule? Do they want to be treated that way? No, no, no. But I feel justified and righteous. I am alleviated of sin in my situation for I am fighting for justice. Right. I'm powerful now. I'm and I will openly fight. I think it was Malcolm X, one of one of my he's he, Malcolm X was fucking solid. He was he had some pretty clever things. One of the things, you know what? I'm going to put it out there. We're put, I'm putting it out there. Not picking a side, but just saying his quote. He said, you want to know what the most dangerous thing in the black community is? White liberals. He said, you know why? They victimize us to hold us down so they can righteously be heroes to exonerate themselves through protecting us, looking out for us. Mm -hmm. They have to keep us down so they feel above us, but look good for helping us because they should pity us. Mm Mm-hmm. It was, I I love watching the videos where it's like people just asking questions where they had the, they said, uh, is it racist to say that you have to have voter registration? And like, they went to the, the community, the college communities there Mm -hmm. and they were asking these kids, like, is it racist against black people to have voter registration? And they're like, yeah, it's racist because black people don't know how to read. They don't have licenses. They don't have uh, access to education. They don't have internet. It's just, they can't do that. And like, that was the answer. So then he went into the black community. He goes like, do you guys have a license? He's like, hell yeah, I got a license. Do you know where the DME is? He's like, yeah, it's two blocks down and one block over. I know exactly where it's at. It's like, do you have internet? And the kid's sitting there like, I got a phone right here. What are you talking about? Do I have the internet? Of course, that's stupid. You know, do you know how to read? Like, what kind of stupid question is that? Of course I know how to read. How funny is it that people have an impression that the black community doesn't have internet, can't get a license, and doesn't know how to read? And they're like, that is some ignorant ass shit. It really is. But they sell it to us and make it sound like, oh, you need us. You need us. Malcolm X is like, that's the most dangerous person. Mm-hmm. It's the most, they want you to feel bad. The ones were like, look at the shame system. I saw this fucking bananas thing where this lady had a whole church of people have everybody not black, put their hands on black people and then say, sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, and like, I see that. and like all my black friends are like, never fucking do that, dude. Don't, <laughs> right, don't. don't don't, do don't feel sorry for me. Don't pity. I'm doing pretty good. I got, you know, my buddies, he owns his own business. He's doing really well. Like, yeah. he's like, he's like, don't you ever fucking do that shit. Yeah. Like, don't, don't apologize for some shit that we never did. Yeah. And best friends for you. I'm going to, now I have to say sorry for something that him and I never even were a part of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it's part of that, that guilt, that shame and guilt again, you know, and for me, understanding, and there's so many things that are coming to my mind right now, but like understanding when you, are 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 given into that mentality you're given into that victimhood you perpetuate that you know we talk about the law of attraction you know you perpetuate more of that victimhood you perpetuate more of that victim mentality and you bring more things and more politicians to you that will continue to to nourish that you know so Uh that's for me i'm like no no you know, even though like i i still have a long way to go in the the space that i want to be in and 
being a physician and everything like that. I'm, I refuse to accept that victimhood. You know, I, yeah. I see certain things and I may say, you know, as far as, you know, stereotyping, I may, I may feel it from time to time, but I refuse to be a victim to that. It's the only way to show, like, uh, in order to break the stereotype, you have to not live the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's, it just makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's just hard to it's hard to support that kind of hatred, though. And like, it's funny that the same people who would just go after you in a comment, mm -hmm. attack you in a comment viciously, were the same people who are like attacking people for not supporting black people. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. But they're attacking a black woman. Right. <laughs> like, how ironic. I, it's very confusing. I'm, it's, and all of these. My people. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for protecting me and <laughs> you're attacking me now. It's yeah. just so confusing to watch the behavior, just even objectively, like not picking any sides and just going like, really? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think we're paying attention here. In order to get peace, I'm going to destroy with hatred and judgment. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't think that's how we get peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. No freedom, no liberation through that. No discord, no conversation, no understanding, no empathy, no love, no, no compassion. Just, yeah. I hate you. And that makes me better. And I hope you, you know, you hope you die or, you know, you deserve just, to die. Yeah. <laughs> just the worst. Like what, where does this come from? And now we have social media. We can just voice all of this and, and just put all of spew all of this poison out there. It's just like, oh, mm -hmm. I have to take a break it's sometime. That's an interesting one too. I have a, I have a theory with choices. I, I, my first book is everything is a choice, mm -hmm. you know? And so it gets into choice theory and how choices work. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's interesting if you look at how people operate when they do things they know are wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think that people will, will go as far as they can until there's a consequence. Mm -hmm. And that's all people. This isn't a race thing. This is all human beings. You'll go as far as you can until there's a consequence that stops you from doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if it's hurting somebody or stealing something. Like if I was going to steal and there's a cop is like right next to me, mm -hmm. what are the likelihoods I'm going to get away with it? <laughs> right. Slim Not high. So my likelihood of stealing because it's a guaranteed, like I'm guaranteed busted are lower. But if I'm all alone or there's some reason where they can't do anything like this, there's the made some dumb rule in Chicago. You saw, I think is it 600 or $900? I want to say $600. Anything under six hundred dollars, the cops won't arrest you for. Yeah, I thought that and was so, in L.A., right? Oh, I think it was nine hundred in L.A. Oh, it was okay. higher, okay. or eight hundred. It was it's a higher number, but even in Chicago, it was like six hundred and under. Andrea, at her stores, she would have people who would just people would come in, just right into their bag, and then just walk out. Wow! Like, well, if you have the opportunity to break the stereotypes, why would you just embody it? You know, it makes it really tough. It makes it tough, especially if you got to think, too, as minority, that's not the majority. Mm -hmm. And if the minority, when given the opportunity to show, like, hey, we'll show our true colors. We're good. We've got mm -hmm. this. We're, we are actually, you had us all wrong. Mm -hmm. Judge me by my character, not mm -hmm. the color of my skin. I'll show you mm -hmm. the right way to do things. And then, like, just going in and just the shelf right into a bag and walking out. Yeah. And you go, no, 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 don't do that. You're like my buddy said, you're making us look bad. No, 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 no. Yeah. And you know what? I think there is a group of us that are rising up beyond that. And it's saying they're saying no. Like, you know, even if it's just the group of us alone, we are going to stand up against that. And we are going to uh, show people like what you're saying, like, no, this is this is a stereotype, but it's not us. This is not who we are. Um, yeah. And I think that media kind of puts that out there you know as far as the the people who are still within the stereotype and i think we see that more and we get discouraged by that more but i think overall i think people are waking up i think more people. I, it seems it seems like it. the bullshit's getting called yeah and like the, and I, i'm actually there's a lot of stuff i saw that was like pretty cool like where you watch people go like hey we we caught you guys yeah. we're catching the bullshit you're feeding us we caught it yeah and like I, li I, I like watching it where people go like you're not gonna suppress us anymore you're not gonna convince everybody that we're the victims we can actually run our own shit mm -hmm. we can like we can actually do this without the you convincing us that we have to rise up and hurt people. Mm. Like when people start doing evil in the, in the name of good, it's a very confusing behavior to call justice. Mm. You know, it's just interesting to watch. And I say it on all sides. Mm. 
there's not not me picking a side on this one. It's like right. that's just not right in any ways. Mm-hmm. You know, this is why I don't fall into I don't fall into most polarization on both sides. Like as you see the extreme rights and the extreme lefts, and you're like, what the fuck are you guys doing? I know. I know. On both sides is bananasville. Like it's like no. I know. And it's like when they are like maybe interviewing one of their own, they're like softballing and they're not really tackling or addressing <laughs> all, right. all of the, the hypocrisies that are, you know, being spewed out and saying, like you said, for both sides. And it's like some people I just can't watch anymore. I mean, I've, I've been able to watch both sides at, at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but like even like the Candace Owens that's out there, I'm like. She, she has she has her her pros and then her cons. She has good moments and then she's like, Candace, what are you doing? Yeah, like, yeah. And as somebody like her, I'm like looking up to her. She's like strong. She's powerful. She's being able to to speak her piece. But then, as of recently, I'm like some of the things that she's been saying. Like she just goes on and on and on without actually like yeah. taking a moment to reflect on what she's saying and the impact of what it is that she's saying. Like I saw her on an interview with uh, Russell Brand. Uh, I think mm. it was recorded maybe like a year ago, but there were some things and he, he was even catching her up in her, her hypocrisy in the conversation. He's, he's a lot sharper than people give him credit for. Oh, he's like Russell Brands, sharp. he's a lot sharper than people would give him credit for. His accent is so thick. It's tough to catch sometimes, <laughs> but, but he's, he's a lot sharper than people would give him like that initial credit. He's also played really funny characters, which is a, you know, he has to break that character right, the stereotype. You know, stereotype for that. Cause he's played, he's played like the really dumb guy on shows, but then he's like really smart, mm-hmm. but yeah. no, but you're right. I've seen her too. Like where I watch her be on some of these debates and just drop a bomb, like good point. Mm-hmm. But then I also watch her where she gets triggered. Mm-hmm. And once she gets triggered, you're like, Oh, Candace hit the brakes, oh, girl. No, no okay, you're back to reality. You are on stage in front of everybody. You can't lose your shit right now. Mm-hmm. Come back to reality, Candace. I love I, I I loved watching some of like her old uh talking points and the things that she would do and just the spaces she would be in. But like I said, recently, like since she's gotten her own podcast, it's hard. It's hard to watch. It's tough for me to watch um blame, shame, and judgment on any side. Right. It's tough. And this is where I would I would this is why it was really tough when I would try and catch through articles. I'd go on both sides and read the left and the right articles, mm-hmm. and then I would have to remove every propaganda opinion mm-hmm. and just go like it, it'd be like this. Like one side would be like, Trump gave a speech today and he is a radical fascist monster who's just trying to make everybody follow his bullshit and he's a piece of shit and he's the worst. I'm like, okay. And then I'll go to the other side and then Trump gave a speech today and it was riveting and amazing and he's the most inspiring leader that we've ever had. And I'm like, out of both of these articles, the only thing that I got is Trump gave a speech. Right. <laughs> that we can count on in his relationship. Like everything else, yeah. everything else is just an opinion. Like that's the only thing I got is that he gave a speech. I don't have anything except for just opinions after that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, these are tough articles to read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I forget who it was I was just listening to where I think it was Boyce Watkins. Um, he was talking about how journalism has turned a, a corner. And it's like a lot of those article titles and stuff like that, you'll see a lot of opinions in them as opposed to just pure journalism. It's tough. And this is where people are, they're used to speaking in the algorithms that they're caught up in. And it's, like I said, it's really difficult to see, like, when people are caught up in algorithms, they really do believe that the whole world is that way. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, I don't think it's that way. I'm not plugged into what you're plugged into. I have, I have talks all the time with people who are plugged into algorithms, uh, social justice warriors, toxic masculinity, uh, feminism, uh, red pill stuff. Like, you see all these things. And I'm like, I've only seen like this much of it. I'm not plugged into that stuff and nor do I have to run into it that often because it seems like it's fringe groups, Mm -hmm. but they're just loud. Yeah. And I think that's mostly what it is. It's just, they, they understand that there is a world outside of the space that they're in, but they're so caught up into it. Like like what you're saying, you know, it's like, it's hard to really see anything else, but because of the numbers and because of the quote unquote success that they're seeing, it's like it, 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 it gives them that fuel to continue to drive in that direction, even though it's the wrong way or it's misguided at times. It's like it gives them that motivation to just keep going and keep getting those views and keep getting those clicks and everything like that. And I, I feel bad. You know, and well, that, that that attention becomes toxic. Mm-hmm. It becomes like the the addiction itself becomes right. uh, a, 
a toxic behavior because they're in denial of reality and seeking some sort of gratification to feel good mm-hmm. comes in through pleasure side, which is the distraction aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And so that's the recipe for addiction, even if it's just attention. Yeah. Yeah. That dopamine hit. It comes same thing. Like, yeah. Same as emotional eating, same as drinking alcohol, mm-hmm. same as all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes sense, too, because then people are getting beaten down in one way or another. It doesn't matter where you're at. People are getting their asses kicked left and right. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody's really winning when everyone's using hate as the weapon for peace. No one's winning. And so whether you're shamed down into submission or you're in charge with the wrong name tag, like, Mm -hmm. no one's winning because it's exposing everybody. But then it gets into the sadness part, that despair, the emotional intelligence people don't have. And then you start going into um, how do people cope? And this is the that's the commonality I was going to get to for rap songs and country songs. The one thing that's in common is when things are going really well or things are going really bad. Either way, we're drinking. Uh, (laughs) Right. (laughs) That is true. That is definitely true. Either way, there's alcohol involved. Well, what's that do? Our system does not do well with alcohol. It's not made for it. Yet it's in everything. Like there's like my girls like country music. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, can you show me some of these songs that don't have a drink in it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I'm either met her at the bar or she left him at the bar. Right. (laughs) Neither way. It's either whiskey or beer. I'm drinking either way. If it's a party, I'm drinking. And if I'm sad, I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it seems like if anything goes wrong, you're drinking. Then how many past the Cavassier and uh, blame it on the alcohol songs are there? Bottles and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, there's, if there's something right or something wrong, I'm drinking either way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what, Rick? I have been really enjoying this conversation. I do have another appointment coming up pretty soon. I do too. This has just yeah. been fun. Yeah. I really appreciate hanging out with you. I didn't know we're in the local area together too. It'd be cool to, like, we can actually record live. I got an extra spot in the studio. Oh. Yeah, that'd be fun. This has been a great conversation. I actually I got to commend your warrior spirit, too, for like um, these are topics that most people don't want to have a conversation, you know, and I love that we're able to have this discord without any like we don't have to hate or blame and uh, have the like the blowout reactions that you're just watching most people happen where there's like. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Okay. Like, it doesn't have to be like, well, you're fucking wrong because, like, right. we don't, you know, doesn't have to have that. And so I just honor you and appreciate you very much for this conversation and the openness to have it. And very thankful for you. So, uh, gratitude. Yeah, Thank you so much. And I appreciate this space. I, I, I mean, like I said, just getting the word out about emotional intelligence has really become a passion of mine. And it, I didn't know it was such a passion until just maybe a year, two years ago since COVID, really. Um, but it's like, I, I really want to get this word out. And I just appreciate every space, including yours, that I've been able to, to share it. Oh, yeah. No, this is going to trigger some people. No, <laughs> That's all right. That's, that's, that, <laughs> because that's where they need to work on their emotional intelligence. Yes, exactly. So, so if you this. if you got triggered from this, you're either calling me or Janice to be able to get in with working with what we do for the men come this way. Mm-hmm. For if you just don't like me, go Janice's side. <laughs> <laughs> and either way, yeah. we'll help you work through whatever it is you're working through so you don't have to be a hate monger in this world and you can find some love and peace. Mm. Yes. They need more faith, girl. And they need freedom and empowerment and joy and enthusiasm. One thing I didn't mention, the word enthusiasm comes from the Greek and it means to be possessed or inspired by God. I want people possessed. Mm. (laughs) We're going to give them the good possession. Yes, yes. (laughs) Okay. No alcohol. Okay. (laughs) Right, right. Not that one. Not that one. We're going to blame it on the spirit, not the alcohol, not the spirits. I love it. Well, Janice, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We'll have to do more. And if this ends up getting some big reaction, then we'll do even more. Ooh, yes, I like to yeah. do more. We'll show, we'll show them, <laughs> right. whoever them is. <laughs> we'll find out, right? <laughs> and then we'll make them us because together we're all better. Mm-hmm. Conquerors <laughs> we'll or be, warriors, take your pick. Yeah, we'll be like, I hear you and I agree with you. And they're like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> right. No, you're supposed to be outraged. You're supposed to be mad. <laughs> You're a white piece of shit. I'm like, am I though? <laughs> right? Come on. You get that's all you got? <laughs> that's your best move. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. Yeah. Let's let's have some more fun later. And uh yeah, appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Thank you all so much. <laughs> See ya. Click on the button and you can become the hero in your own story. 
it's time to start making the choices to change. And the evolution that you're going to do begins with choosing the next step. This is the way. And together, we're always stronger.